Hey guys, we are live. We got a truther chat, a timeline shenanigans chat. Right, going live. I got my brothers Vitaly and Paul. Alpha Talks, Understanding Conspiracy. Welcome to Friday Night Live. <laughs> Sounds good. Good to be here. A lot to say. I guess you've been you've been pretty wrapped up in the day job and you haven't been able to, to probably talk as much about the stuff you want to. So Vitaly says he's been interested, he's been interested in sharing stuff about the timeline shenanigans that we were, that we all believe in that like, where are we, when are we? Um, and I'm sure Paul has probably got a million things to say as he always does. <laughs> as I always do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll try, I'll try not to say as much today. I'll just let no, you guys no, know. No, 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 <laughs> no, by please all, do. No, by all yeah. means. That's why I say. I'm sure that like Paul, cause he's been, going back and forth with all these other podcasters and creators. It's like, I imagine all the stuff that you, you guys get into. So please share. Jill thing. Jill thing. But right now, do you want me to share right now? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Well, like, yeah, anything no. new. Um, well, well, yeah, we'll just, yeah, just, yeah, go ahead. Tell us, tell us what you've been working on. Tell us what, um, like, obviously, what, have you learned anything in the past couple of weeks that's, that's kind of blown your mind? Um, uh, well, I just, I just did a show with, um, a guy called Hijacker, who's on a uh, revolution radio. He has his own show on there and he, um, I ha he, he invited me on to talk with him about maybe one or two months ago. And he had just all these ideas and rattling around in his brain. You could tell he's been thinking hard about this since he first heard about it. And he was like, my videos, your guys' videos like blew his mind. And he's just, he's like, I think he's like in his sixties or something, maybe late fifties. Mm -hmm. So to him, it's like, this is just, everything's just completely up in the air in his brain. And he, he, he works heavily in politics. He said he worked with politicians and local governors and helping on their com campaigns and dealing with like, um, optics and things like that. And they ended up going against somebody he used to work for because they were promoting something he, religiously speaking christian speaking cannot support you know some to do i think it was a lot to do with all the um the tr i can't really talk about it but you know what i mean mm. it was all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff yeah. and um mm -hmm. but he ended up going heavy into all that so he, he knows the politics game and he says the biggest evidence for him that we're in the little season is that he's seen just how evil people can actually be working in that world <laughs> and right. so he was he was speculating about who are the resurrected and he was just going on and on and on explaining how we're like the, the people who live today are those who were in Sheol, but were like the bottom of the barrel, the worst people. And that's why the Saints Little Season is just so terrible, full of terrible people doing terrible things all the time. It's because we as humans, the sinners, which Jesus has given this chance to, is, is theorizing, and we are the worst. <laughs> like, we are just the worst. And he says, like, he says he believes this just simply because of what he's seen in his life and the people, the leaders he's seen and the way they think and behave and act. Uh, so that was interesting, and he just went on with all of his like geopolitical viewpoints of how the millennial reign would have gone down, how um, people would have interacted during that time when Christ initially came, how kings would have reacted, how leaders would have reacted, how Christ would have had to establish his reign, and then he then he talks about how at the end of the millennial reign, and I thought this was interesting. It says Christ basically built the infrastructure as it is today to help us, the worst of the worst, make it, basically. Which is why we have cities which are just beautiful and built up and impossible to fully destroy, even though, although Satan's had a good go to try and erase everything. Mm -hmm. And he says the reason he built all the canals, the infrastructures, the, 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 the homes, the places to live, the, the pipe work, everything, it, during his thousand-year reign was to give the chance to people like us who were the rest of the dead who were did not live again till the thousand years had ended. He says, we need to, he basically said, look guys, to his saints, we need to prepare for what's coming. We need to help these people when they get here because they are the worst. These people are sinners. They are going to go to <laughs> war. They are going to kill each other. They are going to go wild and we need to give them the best chance we can. And it's just, the way he was talking was brilliant. I, I thought it was interesting. So that's what I've been thinking about and that's kind of the thought processes I've been thinking too. Like just how would it have actually gone down how would kings have initially reacted when Jesus left? I'm sure there would have been a huge power vacuum, right? And everyone oh, would have definitely. just mm -hmm. piled into each other to try and take control of everything and claim control of everything that's left behind, you know, and, and say, this is mine. I built this, you know, the Tartarians, let's say. We built this. Mm -hmm. This is our mm -hmm. stuff, you know, even though they built nothing. 
And uh, so that that's those are some of the things I've been thinking about recently and talking about. What about you guys? What have you got? Have you, have, yeah, Val, <laughs> Vitaly, what do you, so what, what do you, what have you really, what's blowing your mind about like, I guess the timeline stuff? Ooh, um, a couple things. Actually, today I uploaded a video on the Antichrist and Nero being the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. And one thing I realized is when you read the scriptures, you got to read it with audience relevance, right? Although the Bible is written to you or for humanity, right? For all humans, it's a lot big parts of the scripture is written to specific people, you know, Jesus' generation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one thing I realized is Paul said that the end wouldn't come until the gospel was preached to every creature, right? Mm -hmm. And then in other verses, it talks about uh, the gospel or the process of the gospel being preached to all nations happening. And then there's a verse in Colossians 1.23, which says that the gospel was preached to all creatures under heaven. Those are definitive crystal clear words like that's like know. that's a miracle how, how we miss that because you know because that that gets thrown around so often well the gospel hasn't been preached to all the nations yet and i'm like hold like, up it, like, it literally says that in the, in the gosh like how much like that wasn't even that long after after jesus jesus ascended mm -hmm. that, that he said that and then the other thing i found was uh somebody sent me a picture of an old geneva bible from 1560 and those Bibles used to have a lot of footnotes on the sides. And in the book of uh, Luke, in the Geneva Bible, there's a footnote that says the prophecies of Armageddon happened within 50 years after Jesus died and got resurrected. That's, cr that's crazy. Mm -hmm. So people back then knew this is not a new idea that just sprung up. It's over at least 600 years old, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at least, right, according to these old English Bibles. And I'm like, wow. So that's two things that would really blew my mind. And then another thing that kind of, blew my mind is the whole like neuro connection right uh, as i was looking into uh neuro being the beast or the antichrist it makes sense that when paul was writing about the number of the beast he expected his first century audience to calculate somebody in their generation there's no amount of wisdom or insight that john could give them to calculate the number of a future beast in three thousand years or two thousand or however long right it's deceptive and it's dangerous if he expected first century readers to be able to calculate it, but he says you'll be able to calculate it. And this is the number, right? They use Gematria. Mm -hmm. During times of antiquity, they use Gematria. It's really popular during that time. So he expected them to calculate the number of the beast. He's like, you'll know who it is. Just use Gematria, figure it out, right? Calculate the number. So that's a few things I've discovered. <laughs> Well, I think that that's that's a great call because I think that more I've been looking into that just 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 straight from the Bible. It's if it's not if it does not make sense to the reader that it's originally written to, it really makes no sense at all. You know, because yeah. it's like the it's some code that needs to be cracked two thousand years later. When yeah, you could imagine he's writing this and there is like this code, like he's coding it because he doesn't really want everybody to know what he's he's calling like the emperor of rome satan basically like that's yeah that's kind of inflammatory for him to do that and i think even um i know we, i had bible scribe on a couple weeks ago and he was and i was watching one of his videos about nero being the beast and how there's these kings that 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 are past and there's the kings that are not yet and it's kind of interesting when you think about like so if Pol apollyon's the beast that comes out and so i think that this is a spiritual being that's coming out of the pit correct Mm -hmm. then if that if that's the case then like literally these emperors of rome are claiming to be apollo like because i remember when i was doing videos about like um apollyon yeah Cal i know caligula claimed to be apollo nero claimed to be apollo i think even Dom domitian later claimed to be apollo so you can imagine that what um so so caligula was trying to i think was in 40 a.d trying to put a statue of himself inside the temple and then i think later he dies mm -hmm. but but then all the things and yeah so like that kind of stuff it only makes sense if it makes sense to the people the stuff is being written to and then and then what was the other one where i was i was listening to a an old teaching about from rc sproul and he was talking about like that when jesus is telling the the people in judea to flee to the mountains when they see this that was like counterintuitive to what they would have done in the first century because back in those days they would have found you know people from outside the cities would go into a walled city like especially like a very secure place like jerusalem that's got massive walls and it seems like you know jerusalem 
besides Balaban, it's had a pretty good run as far as being safe place to be. Mm-hmm. But so they, so he told them to do the exact opposite in those, obviously the people who lived, not the people who shut themselves in the city or especially the ones, the zealots and everybody who shut themselves in the temple thinking God was going to save them. Instead, it was like he brought about ev- all the things he said based on the fact that they did do those things. Yeah. So there's also a contrast between the phrase seal up the scroll in Revelation and don't seal up the scroll in the book of Daniel. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. the video that I made today, I'm actually going to read to you one of my notes. Uh, in the book of Daniel 12, after receiving prophecies, an angel said to him, but you, Daniel, roll up and seal the words of the scroll until the time of the end. Many will go here and there to increase knowledge. By contrast, in Revelation 22.10, the angel told John, then he told me, do not seal up the words of prophecy in this book because the time is near. <laughs> so there's a contrast here. Right? In the former, the angel is saying to seal up the words of the scroll. In the latter, the angel said not to seal up the words of the scroll. And why is that? When a prophecy was to not, or when a prophecy was not to occur for thousands of years, the angel said to seal up the book because it doesn't concern you guys, right? Mm-hmm. So seal it up. But when a prophecy was about to occur near the lifetime of the prophet, he said, "Do not seal up the book because Armageddon is about to unfold. Or prophecy is about to begin." Mm-hmm. That's that seems so, pretty. That seems pretty devastating to the other side when it's yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. this is going to happen in about 500 years is what, what Gabriel's telling Daniel, mm-hmm. right? Seal this up. This is not for you. That the mm-hmm. Messiah is coming later and like, oh, that sucks. You know? Yeah. And then so then he's telling, but yeah, he's telling John, do not seal up this because <laughs> no. the time the time is now. And since then, we've been in Revelation, right? The scroll has not been sealed. We're currently there. The mm-hmm. question is, the question is when and where, right? Mm-hmm. So, but of course, we think it's chapter 20, possibly. It's pretty undeniable, isn't it? When you actually hear these things all together, it's kind of, I mean, <laughs> the language I mean, is pretty, pretty definite. It's pretty immediate, isn't it? You can't. Uh, we've been saying this since the beginning, and a lot of people who just do not want to hear this don't mm-hmm. seem to know or see just how definite this language actually is, and maybe just breeze over it and ignore that. <laughs> I don't know how else to. I can't interpret it any other way now. It's kind of one of those once it's been seen, it cannot be unseen sort of situations, mm. isn't it? It's t- typical conspiracy stuff. But um, this is this is more real than than yeah. a, co- a conspiracy. I mean, I see it as it's like the oldest lie in the Bible, right? That God doesn't mean what he says or he means the opposite of what he says. So he's confusing, right? right? So mm. in Genesis, God said, do not eat the fruit or else ye will surely die for sure. Right. But then the serpent tells Adam and Eve, you will not surely die. God didn't mean what he said. And I think people are making the same mistake today. Oh, this generation, when Jesus said that in the book of Matthew, he's referring to the generation that faces tribulation, not his own. Right. When Jesus told the disciples, some of you standing here will not taste death till I return with my kingdom. He meant some other generation. Right. Oh, yeah. When Jesus said that he would war with the church in Revelation, I forgot what church was it. Was it uh, Pergamum? Pergamon, right? He said, if you do not repent, I will come quickly and war with you. When Jesus said that, he was just playing. Like, y'all don't need to worry about it. You know, he was just kidding. He was talking about a church age a thousand years from then. <laughs> Obvi- yeah, yeah. Obviously. A, <laughs> the church of Pergamum is, is a church for, uh, or a metaphor for the church of elevation today. I, you know, like, I, I, I wonder if they, I wonder if the church of Pergamum knew they were, they were a, a, an allegory for later on. <laughs> <laughs> do you think he means think so. us? Do you think he means us, or do you think he means much later from now? No. Well, if you go to those locations, it's pretty destroyed mm-hmm. and in ruin, you know. So mm-hmm. I mean, that's a clue. And yet, people and yet people do deny these things. People, like it, I said, it's it's so funny that I said I, I actually was just talking to my buddy, my buddy Ricardo, and I was I was saying this has got to be similar to like I've heard that people say that once you go flat, <laughs> once you start to believe in the biblical earth, you don't go back to the heliocentric model. I said, this has got to be very similar with this. But like, once you see it, it really is like, how could I ever say? And then you see, then you hear people talking about like the red heifers, mm-hmm. the, this earthquake today in New York is is the birth pains again, because, you know, like over the last 2000 years, there's been many earthquakes. But this is again, this is part of the birth pains. Like you kind of just look at that and you're like, really? Do you guys still guess? St-? It's almost like you forget that everyone is still on the other side, but then. Like I guess we might as well just get into it because we because there's a big there's a big creator on 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 YouTube that you guys I'm sure are familiar with is 
truth unedited. And I'm not sure. I mean, obviously you had the Dean Odo like a couple weeks ago, and then you have this. And so you have obviously people with big platforms and coming out after like the people talking about the little season or being in the millennial reign, you know, any kind of version of preterism, they are coming out with like the knives in uh, like, just in like angry, angry, not, not, not very calm, you know, dissecting of our arguments. They really just kind of go. So, I mean, so did you guys, did you guys, but I think, I know Vitaly, you sent it to me, Paul, did, I know, did you say you see, did you watch the whole video? Uh, yeah. So, uh, eventually, <laughs> it's one of those videos where it's kind of had to stop it, maybe come back a little bit, re-listen to some of it, and try mm -hmm. and get through the whole thing. Um, yeah. And I, I, I had moments where I skipped a bit because I was like, I just can't listen to this anymore. Then I went, like, no, no, I have to listen to this. So I went back and listened to it. I was like, why did I bother? That did told me nothing. That showed me nothing. Um, yeah, it was. Um, it, it's one of those, isn't it? It's, it and yeah, we, we probably should talk about it. And it's not necessarily yeah. talk about truth unedited exactly. But the um, the beginning of the backlash really is starting to happen now. More and more channels are starting to say this. Like you said, you had Dean Odell, but don't forget we had the Midnight Ride guys as well not too long ago do a full mm -hmm. breakdown of preterism, attacking the straw man, not actually the things we were actually talking about, but attacking a doctrine created by a Jesuit 400 years ago, rather than actually talking about the points we're making today, which are not based on right. that, that specific thing. And that's... We're seeing a lot of it happen now, so we definitely we should probably talk about yeah. this. I think. So the biggest red flag for me is just calling your subscribers stupid or people stupid for just asking questions, looking into it, mm -hmm. um, approaching this with anger, right? Shutting down a conversation. That's always a red flag to me. It reminds me of the whole flat Earth stuff. You know, when you talk about biblical cosmology and you're just asking questions, looking into it, you get shut down. You get called stupid. Nobody wants to reason with you. But the Bible says, don't answer a matter until you hear it, you know, examine the truth fully, then rebuke, not rebuke first. Hmm. And watching it, I was actually surprised because Truth Unedited usually, like I'd watched him years ago and his videos are pretty logical, you know, and he's pretty patient and he's very, um, you know, into educating people. But this video was new. He like showed his arrogance and pride and just anger, you know, that people would even entertain such an idea. So that was surprising to me. And even his own subscribers that don't agree with this view of uh, preterism or the fact that prophecy did happen, they're even calling him out on it. They're like, you didn't really address any of the major points. You didn't even address the Messiah's own words. You went straight to the Old Testament, mm -hmm. not even wanting to you know, address when Jesus said this generation or mm -hmm. any other time he addressed his generation concerning Armageddon. So mm -hmm. they were calling him out on that. And these are people that don't believe in this view of scripture that some of the prophecies already happened. So that was surprising to me. I'm like, wow. Like, yeah. Yeah. I think that, well, for, to, to let it, to be clear, he actually took the video down. And I think supposedly we, we were going to advertise this is what we were going to talk about, but, but he took the video down. So we're going to wait till he, till he presents everything. But obviously at this point we had to, keep, we had to talk about what he did present. So he took it down and yeah, I obviously, I had more fun going through the comment section to see, to see what people actually, um, what people actually thought about what his argument was. Mm -hmm. But if I said, again, it's funny. I, I, I texted Vitaly and I said, if anything, this kind of strengthens my own resolve in this topic, because it's like, because you see very similar to Dean Odell, where it's like, he didn't really come at, he never came at our strong points of the argument. He like, he didn't come at like why most of us got to this position in the first place. And just, and very similar to like the biblical earth. We all had the previous view before the same one as they have. And so we had to be convinced. And I think that where there, these people don't like is the fact that we do have a strong argument. And it's like, I think that they, their weak argument is trying to like shout us down mm -hmm. instead of actually say, hey, here's, here's why you might think that. And I, can, I get why you might think that, but here's what, you know, here's some nuance to, yeah. to your position. But no, instead, like, I think his position was basically like, for one, you're a liar or you're deceived and you're a deceiver if you believe this, or if you're like, almost if you've entertained, and if you've even entertained this, he basically just said, you need to go read your Bible again. <laughs> like you need to read it again. You need to read it again and understand it like I do. And it, it really was almost like, and then, yeah, so so what was interesting was certain people in the comment section saying that they are obviously wavering because probably because they've heard, you know, our podcasts, you know, or, or similar ones to ours, 
and then they're like, wow, they're making really good points and mm -hmm. they're hard to refute. And I think they were looking to people like, like him, who's obviously very established in this platform to answer some of our, our best arguments in order to say, okay, good. I go back to believing this rapture is coming soon. You know, I can go back to every. And then I think it was probably like, I think they were probably a little discouraged from saying, oh, wow, you didn't even answer any of their arguments. Hmm. You just said, believe me. And now they're like, oh, no, like mm -hmm. maybe those guys are right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I could definitely feel feel that in the comments section when I was going through it. Like just this, there was those devotees, weren't there, which were like, everything you say is brilliant, truth and edited. I, I thank you for addressing this false doctrine. And now we can just move on. And thanks for debunking all of this. And then you had these other comments answering these comments saying, where exactly did he debunk this? Because I can't find anywhere in his <laughs> reference to Isaiah and the promises of things to come where it's, it explained how those things may have already come. He didn't explain any of it away. And um, it, see, I don't, the thing is, this is the sad thing. I don't, I took all of this away from it. This is my summary from what I took from this. I still consider him a brother in Christ. He, right. yeah. he, he, 100%. he does not consider us the same. And that's sad. It's sad that that's how the people are reacting. They would mm -hmm. literally excommunicate people like us just for trying to get to the truth of our savior and our belief and our foundation, our relationship with God. We're on a journey just like everybody else. His channel is truth unedited. Yeah. He goes on to edit the truth and it's kind of, it's kind of sad. <laughs> it's sad that deleted again, com, deleted yeah, it's, everything. it's sad that he would disown fellow brothers and sisters in Christ over something like this, rather than sincerely just talk it out, you know? And, yeah. the, and I don't feel like we ever came at this topic thinking we have all the answers we still don't claim to have all the answers we're just coming in saying oh well this was interesting have you seen this bible from the 1500s that has these footnotes for example you know just share and go wow that is fascinating that does seem to corroborate more of what we're talking about and they're the type of conversations we're having and i do think people who who've been in his channel f types for a while so these channels that have always been talking about the signs the coming of the things to come and the birth pains examples and the next mark of the beast examples. Mm -hmm. He's very much developed his channel. And this isn't again to disparage him. I still consider him a brother in Christ, but fear has been his modus operandi for a long time. Yeah. His base is based on the idea that it's about to go down soon. Have you seen this other sign? And it's, that's what most of his videos are, but yeah, obviously he does have a lot of biblical grounding to say that these signs are, must be something is about to happen. But, what we're trying to say is, are you sure those signs aren't contrived and the true yeah, signs yeah. have already happened? We're only just suggesting that maybe we're in the wrong time here. You're on the wrong yeah. time. And you're, you're, biblically, you're sound, but your timing's off. And that's all we're trying to say, you know. And, and again, my takeaway is it's just very sad that a lot of these Christians, the, the knee-jerk reaction is to disown us, to, to cast us off and just call us of the devil and that's it <laughs> like no no discourse done and I mean, um, we're called to reason you know so it's, yeah we're supposed to come together and discuss topics we agree or disagree with and anyone who shuts a topic down that's a red flag and kind of makes me want to look more into whatever topic you're shutting down you know mm -hmm. like why mm -hmm. are you shutting this down if it's a lie you know if it's a lie the lies will fall and the truth will stand so mm -hmm. don't yeah, shut it down you know mm -hmm. so i was wondering you know like why do people react so angrily to these topics i mean especially people who claim that they're open to the truth or open to correction. And I realized that people's faith hangs on a thread, right? They think it hangs on Christ, but in reality, their faith hangs on the rapture timelines being part of the millennial kingdom and yeah. whatever else. But if your faith hangs on Jesus and the eternal kingdom, the new heaven, new earth, you're okay with whatever timeline we might be in. Right. Mm -hmm. Again, I would, mm -hmm. I was hoping he would actually prove me wrong or prove us wrong about this idea. And I was a little disappointed because I thought that he's going to break down every little argument, every strong point, and actually discuss them. Oh, sweet. Maybe he's going to debunk one of our points and actually go deep into it like he did with a lot of other topics. And I was just disappointed. I'm like, okay, it doesn't do anything. Every single person that bashes this topic, they come at it from like an angle of emotionalism, like not even a logical angle. So that, to me, tells me that there must be some truth to this if everybody's mm. just, just reacting angrily, right? So yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, I think it was, was it, was it, uh, oh, good, Paul. No, it's just on, on that topic, you know, what is this reaction, where is it coming from? Someone left me a very interesting comment, and it, it was a fair comment, and I, I kind of understood where they were coming from relatively, because I scratched a bit deeper and I forgot to the bottom of it a little bit, but they were basically saying, the problem is with your theology is that it, it has, it has no blessed hope, it takes away the blessed hope of the coming of the kingdom, and my, res my response was basically, your hope shouldn't be in getting to live during a thousand year earthly reign. Your hope should be in the coming of the new heaven and earth at the end of time after the great white throne judgment. That's where your hope should be, mm -hmm. not getting to rule in an earthly kingdom. The, all the earth, the earth will pass away. <laughs> this is this is temporary. Right. We're mm -hmm. looking to we need to look to the eternal. A thousand year reign is finite. It's not the infinite. It's not the final thing. It's it's just a taste of things to come. Our hope should be in. The, the afterwards but their argument back was well the thousand year reign is is um what is it judgment comes immediately just before the the, uh, the thousand year reign they had the, the the time scales were off they didn't know about the little season again they didn't yeah they don't mm -hmm. know the pattern they don't know how it goes you no know, tribulation thousand year reign little season great white throne judgment then new heaven and earth they think the new heaven and earth began when the thousand year reign began that's literally right. what he believed. Mm -hmm. And I immediately knew why he had that point then. So you think we're just in hell then? You think we're in the lake of fire or something? You you think I'm saying we're in the lake of fire because your, your assumption is based on this predetermined idea that you think the new heaven and earth begins with the millennial reign of Christ. So the, our language is off with people because a lot of people have... have the word is deceived. I don't want to be like truth unedited here saying, oh, they're all just deceived and don't know the Bibles. But in a way, they actually... Someone has told them the wrong thing someone yeah. has given them a, a false timeline somewhere in the when they were learning about what the book sa says and i can't i don't know how you can read revelation 20 and not get the timeline we're explaining here it's laid out like a roadmap quite clearly yeah. one thing after another but they yeah. still believe the new heaven and earth begins with the millennial reign after tribulation immediately and I, I, I don't know what... The only way they're getting that is somebody told them that and basically told them a lie. That's all yeah, I can... I, that's my only assumption, but sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was thinking that what I noticed that he was like... I felt like he was projecting a a position onto us that was heretical in order to call us heretics because mm. he was saying like, if we're past the millennial reign, then there's no salvation for anybody. Yeah. So he's like saying, we're saying that nobody can be saved now. And we're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, where are you even getting that? Like, we never said that. I don't believe that. No. I've, I've, we've, I've, we've countered that. That that even Like, if ever that comes up, I'm like, no, no, no. We have, Jesus is still promising us eternal life. I have no reason not to, to doubt that for one second. So he's putting that on us. Because that's what I'm saying. Like, to me, I was saying, like, that is a, you know, so when he's saying that, so then you have people who are starting to come along to the belief we're on. And he's telling people, no, you can't be saved now if you believe that. So then people who do do believe that, they're like, well, where is he getting that from? Is that true? Well, I don't want to believe that. Mm -hmm. Again, no, we've never said that. And I think that, like, as you said, that we don't we don't say mark him now. Do not listen to him. I would say, that, like, be good Bereans, no matter who you're listening to. Mm -hmm. But I think that the place, I think, again, going back to, like, the biblical earth, into where we're at in the little season idea. We didn't come to this place. Like we didn't start on this position day one. So I think that's why I think we do have, we're hopefully we're the side that's given a little more gracious to people to say, Hey, I wasn't there until recently. So why would I ever be the word say, you don't even know anything. Like, because if, if somebody would ever spoke to me like that before, obviously that's the kind of person you shut out right away. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think that again, like so, when you when you do feel like you have the truth on your side, we can say, "Hey, what about this? What about this?" We can calmly say, "Hey, what about when Jesus said that all these things will be fulfilled before this generation passes away?" Like, and calmly say that. And I think that that to me was the the biggest omission. And maybe when he reuploads, and maybe after he researched the topic a little bit, he reuploads. Maybe he'll have a counter argument to that. But I I thought. You know, when I watched the video, the omission of anything that Jesus actually said was the fact that if he put that out there, he wouldn't be calling us liars. 
he would be calling Jesus a liar because, mm -hmm. because, and I think that's the, what, like that, what I, what I really noticed, and I've said this over and over again on my lives recently. And actually I was, it's funny. I was, RC Sproul was saying this, even though he doesn't have the same position I do on like certain things. I, I think he still believed in a rapture that was coming, but, but what was interesting is like that he kind of puts it in the way that, They, if if any of them happened, they all had to happen because Jesus doesn't give us the room to say, well, he was talking about the destruction of Jerusalem, but not his coming, his return, because he doesn't give us that leeway. And then it's like, well, when is it going to happen? And so Jesus, that's the specific question he's asked. You know, isn't that the, mm -hmm. the thing where it's like that he's asked, when will these things be? What will the signs be? And then he says they, they are. So like so you, there's no wiggle room. So I would love to wiggle out of that position where I could I could still have like people would be comfortable with the things I say and not call me a heretic. Mm -hmm. And it would be easy to say, oh, well, yeah, I don't think he came back yet, but I think all the other things happened. But he isn't Jesus didn't give us any wiggle room. Mm -hmm. It's like you either believe him or you don't. And then, yeah, to, in order for people like I don't care how many subscribers you have, how many followers you got on you know these platforms. If you don't actually have a good argument about what he's saying, then obviously you can go into Isaiah and Ezekiel and, and Jeremiah and say, well, did this happen? Did this happen? This happen? I was like, I don't know exactly all the details. I can't tell you exactly how it all works out, but I can tell you that the abomination of desolation happened. <laughs> I can tell you that Jesus came back because he said he did. He said he was going to, and then there, and then there's enough evidence to for me to be comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. And I think that again, like so, so we have the scriptures. We got a pretty good handle on the scriptures, and we also have physical, real, historical evidence, which I, I don't think they do. And again, so that when they start pointing to every the the sign of the new side of Jonah that's happening on Monday, like, like you think that you think that we're reaching, but you think that Jesus, when he was talking about the sign of Jonah, he was talking about an eclipse over America. Two eclipses, two eclipses that go over to, 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 to form a tav. Like, I mean, come come on. Like, like Jesus literally was not talking about a sign in the heavens. He was talking mm -hmm. about himself. Mm -hmm. Like, so when they use those, these people are using... Audience relevance matters. You know, when you read the scriptures, find out who exactly he's talking to, who's who, right? Because if you don't find out, you make the mistake of thinking, well, he's talking to me or he's not talking to me, right? Mm -hmm. So break it down if you have to. Write it down on a piece of paper. In the book of Matthew, when the disciples are asking him questions, is Jesus looking at them and answering? Or is he just looking up from your Bible, you know, like <laughs> talking to you specifically, right? Even though the Bible was written for us, it wasn't written to us specifically, right? That's mm -hmm. on Revelation. Paul says, Grace and or not Paul, John says, grace and peace be onto you to the seven churches, right? Mm -hmm. Those seven churches are gone. We don't have those seven churches. But, so clearly it was written to specific people during the first century, but it is for us, right? Isn't it isn't it funny that, that a lot of people, especially in America, they always say, you know, the book, you know, America's never mentioned in the book of Revelation. So there's like there must be something that happens to America. It's like, or there was no America. <laughs> it wasn't written to Americans. <laughs> like that, that's, the, that's the other option that it really was. It was talking to the the seven churches mm -hmm. in, in, in Turkey that are mentioned specifically by name. Or we and were it, mentioned, but just not by America. You know, you know the theory that they were we, called, they're called Rome. <laughs> maybe the whole world was Rome. You know, when the whole world was connected like Pangea and when the earthquakes happened, all mm -hmm. the islands moved apart. Right. So that that's one theory. Mm -hmm. of what happened well it was funny i i started watching i know this guy's not a christian content creator but i i'm sure you guys have seen his name john levy i was watching yeah, some yeah. his, i was watching some of his videos and he was he's pretty he's kind of his style is kind of funny and he was he was he was showing a lot of the infrastructure and i think one of these videos the kind of timeline thing kind of did blow my mind a little bit you know so i went to washington dc you know a few weeks ago and obviously everybody who goes there says this place looks like rome and you can imagine for one thing, you know, about Washington, D.C., at least now, maybe not in the 1800s, mm -hmm. it's kept up real nice. Like, so obviously things don't get into the ruins phase. But what would Washington, D.C. look like if you let it set for 
a couple hundred years, buried it under some dirt. And then what it would look, what would it look like? And so he was showing a video and he was talking about um, the Pantheon in Rome. That's like, it's, this is insane just to think about the, the ingenuity, ingenuity of the Romans that they, this was the largest unsupported concrete dome in the world. I think it might still be, or it wasn't until like, like very recently. Mm -hmm. And he was showing kind of like the, um, the patterns on the inside of the dome. And then he was showing the, the no longer here Penn Station. And he was showing that like, how similar they were. And it's like, it, it kind of blew my mind to think about that. It's like, what if those buildings are not me? Because because even in like the um, the mainstream history, the Pantheon was built between like year zero and like 600. And you're like, okay, so they really have no idea when it was built. And then, so then you have like Penn Station and they're, the construction methods are similar. And obviously if you, if you guys have not looked up Penn station ever, the, the pictures are unbelievable. The inside, like the bases mm -hmm. of the column are like 20 something feet tall. I don't know how big it up, but the dome goes up and it's got like, yeah, the, the patterns in it. And I really say, I actually really did kind of consider that for a second. What if they were built around the same time? And I, and I thought about that. Cause if you look at the outside of it, unbelievably looking roman looking building mm -hmm. and if it was in rome nobody would have any they would have no doubt who built it but mm -hmm. it was built in new york and it makes it it makes no sense to us but what if and i really had to think about it like i don't have a good reason to say that it's not i think i mean i think that there's a good reason that's why it's no longer with us because it's 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 too suspicious it's it makes the idea that they built a building like that and destroyed it in a very short amount of time makes zero sense. Like mm -hmm. it, it was probably the most impressive building in all of, all of New York and they just demolished it. Why? <laughs> I mean, it, it doesn't fit. Unless... It doesn't fit the American narrative. You, you're a very young country who shouldn't have architecture like that there at all. It should, mm -hmm. it doesn't, it's, it, but the thing is you're talking about stations here, aren't you? Like train stations in yeah. you, you should see every European train station. They are beautiful. Every single one of them is a work of art worthy of being called a cathedral in its own right. But it's mm -hmm. been repurposed with crappy little metal doors installed at the bottom of these huge, beautiful archways, you know what I mean? Made of marble mm -hmm. and they've installed these, these metal, opening sliding doors so people can walk through and get onto a train or something but you you look at these buildings and you look up at them and you're like this wasn't built for the purpose of people coming and going onto a train this was not built to be a train station it's just been repurposed into one but we can get away with it in europe because we're thousands of years old with our history we've had thousands of years to build these things of course we're going to have them but america you can't have them it does not match the time but i, I guarantee the architecture is just the same it's the same culture that built them, right? Yeah, let, me, it's, let, yeah. me, let me see if I can do a, a screen share on on, on this because this is just like, I think I think people need to see this. Oh, absolutely. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, on the building you just talked about? Yeah, Penn, Penn Station. This, this oh, place. yeah. Look at, look at that thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, just look at that. Like, so we're, we're supposed to believe that that, that thing was was destroyed in a very short order. I mean, like, I'm just gonna see if I can zoom in on one of the pictures of like the inside of it. It's just like, it's, it's so unbelievable. Like that. And like, so when did they build this? Like I said, I don't, I don't even know all the details. I just know that, can you see that one? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just look at the inside of it. You see, you see like the bases of the columns mm -hmm. and you see the people by them. Mm -hmm. Like that makes no sense. No like, sense. like, like, no sense to us. And like, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I guess I, I'm, I'm dumbfounded. There was another one. Paul, have you ever heard the one? It's, um, it's the Royal Crescent in Bath, England. Um, it ring, it rings a bell. But bring it, bring it up. Let's let's bring it up. Let's Let just see. okay. Yeah. My my buddy sent this to me the other day. Royal uh, Crescent. I've never actually been to Bath, but I know all about it. You know the wrong, yeah, the whole Roman city and ruins dig dug up and everything. Yeah. Go ahead, let's have a look. Okay, so 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 look at these. Look at the buildings on here. Look, so this this completely radius building mm. that's got columns for the columns go for days on this thing. 
And then the craziest part is, is look at look at the complex. Yeah, you, it's like you, missing you, a piece. Well, I know, but I mean, <laughs> just look at just look at the one. But like, it's it's radius is everywhere. And supposedly this thing was built in, I believe it was seventeen seventy four. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I mean, Absolutely. I mean, it makes it makes no. I mean, it makes no sense. And you and you think about like that. Like one of these buildings, and like mm. yeah, this perfect crescent shape. Like these are made of stone. Yeah. How many how many buggy loads full of stones would it have taken to build this this thing? Mm -hmm. The thing is, you see this type of architecture in every city in England. Like it's everywhere. It's this is not just Bath. This is even my like my my hometown, my small city of Preston. Just our, our little square, like. It's, just type it in, you know, Preston Square. Type in, type in the Harris Museum. Did you cut out? No, oh, I'm back. Am I here? Harris Museum. Type in the Harris Museum. Yeah, yeah. And, and you'll find it's it's identical architecture. It's um, it and this is just a small nothing. Is it Harris? What, Harris what? Mu Harris, Muse Muse Harris Museum. Yeah, yeah. You'll it'll come up. And uh, oh. you re you re you look at this thing and you think this was not built to be a museum. This is not a museum. This is this is some Roman architecture just slap bang there in the middle. And you can see the other thing next to it with its own spire made of the same stone. You know. Yeah, and, that. Yeah, that's that's very similar to everything in DC. Yeah, that looks exactly like. You know, this and this is this is typical British architecture. Every city has this. Every city has this. Like this is standard. This is pretty standard. Like <laughs> the rich and poor places, it doesn't matter. This is this is it. This is England. This is what we have. You know, and obviously they they say it was all built by Rome, right? Londinium and all these mm -hmm. type of things. And so no wonder we have it everywhere. Um, but this is too much. The buildings surrounding this thing, terrible, absolutely terrible. Just metal monstrosities. You know, type in um, uh, Preston Old Town Hall, and you This is and this used to be right next to this on the same square. So this is what used to be there, right next to the Harris Museum. This beautiful looking wow. church, basically. There it is, next to it. That's what it used to look like. Guess what? Guess that, what? Guess what happened to it? Um, burned it, down. Bur it burned down. It had a fire in about the forties, <laughs> yeah, and then it was demolished. The final layer of it was demolished in the seventies. Absolutely, and it's been where, where, it's been replaced okay. by a horrible cube gray cube that's what like made of plastic that's what it's been replaced with but that's that's what it used to look like and it looks like any other tartarian quote quote you know whatever you want to call it this it's beautiful the high street yeah. used to be amazing and now it's just a, an abandoned closed down hellhole you know well this is you know it looks like i did um the one time that i went live recently we we're i was showing all these post offices around the united states and like I would say that like nine out of ten of them look like that. They yeah. have that. I guess they they're either like town halls and slash post office, and they and most of them had either a clock tower or a bell tower. Like almost every one of them did. And mm -hmm. it was clearly they clearly had a style to them. And yeah, it makes no sense. Of course, then I was I was contrasting what the modern post office look like in these towns, and of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of them are just like, yeah, you kind of just just laugh. But how? But how did me and Vitaly know that it that it there was a fire? <laughs> well, it, it's the same story yes. everywhere. It's the same story <laughs> everywhere. We know we know the the modus operandi now, and uh, it's it's this happened quite late in the game. This fire, a lot of them were in the eighteen hundreds. This happened in the early 1900s, You know, not that long ago. I guess. The forties, mm -hmm. the forties, we'll call it. It's a, I think around mm -hmm. the forties or fifties. There's even a photo of it burning there. You can see it. The second one down, the high contrast. Black and they're trying to put the fire out there with a on the main on the the main images there. I think it's in the second row. Oh right, yeah. right, right here. There it is. I suppose oh, the, the photo of it being burnt down. Yeah, but you've, it's it, it looked like a basically an incredible cathedral. It was a church by any stretch of the imagination, and um, you know Preston itself actually used to be called Priest Town because it's nothing but spires. If you look out, it has more churches per square mile than anywhere else in England. Um, if you get onto a decent vantage point, a hill, and you just look out at Preston, it's just nothing but church spires as far as the eye can see. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing, beautiful place. And uh, when you notice that these, these, the old, they're all built like this, by the way. 
Mm -hmm. we're, we're just full of cathedrals. This, this whole place is full of them. But as I grew up here, I didn't notice or care or have any... I didn't see it until... But now, with this new perspective, I look out at this city, you know, and I've realised this is incredible. Like, what was what was built here over this short period of time? And even considering that, you know, King... Was it King Henry VIII destroyed <clears throat> 800 monasteries in his time? You know, and... and wow. Like, he went on the warpath to destroy as many churches as he possibly could um, during his reign. And these still, still, there's, there's just, there's like a hundred here. <laughs> like, there's a lot here, you know. It, it, there's no way he could have destroyed what was built before, yeah. you know, what this so kingdom clock, was. Clock towers were pretty common back then, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So they, they seem to be. If this is part of the Millennial Kingdom, what if the clock towers were counting down from day one to <laughs> year 1000? <laughs> and they're eagerly waiting for that final day. Mm. And there's something, I mean, there's there's clearly something about it. But yeah, so I was looking at that John Levy's videos. And the one thing he was really kind of blowing my mind with as well, that like, just like the centrally, the centrally planned cities, and then not like just the infrastructure that it takes to support these cities, like yeah, the canal systems, the mm -hmm. rivers that all flow into these places. Like there's something that's interesting where I live. I live on the east coast of the United States, and we have something called the Intercoastal Waterway, and it like mm -hmm. literally goes all the way up and down the coast. And you're and I thought it, and I said, and somebody asked me about that, and I was like, you know, it is sort of weird that it's right on the edge of the coast, but it's protected in all the ways, and you can literally take the biggest ships, and they can go all the way down from like. I'm not exactly sure how far up it goes, but I mean, like, and then it so you start to think about it. Is it possible that some of that was either man-made in some kind of way, or it was directed in a certain way, or did they remove impediments in order for it to go all the way? Because that's pretty, that's pretty lucky if it was already there. Like, and then you see, you start to see some of the, the coastlines, the shape of these big cities, like to get these cities to where they have like the docks, and the concrete that goes all the way down into like into their ports and everything. Does anybody have any clue how long that would take? I mean, obviously we don't have a clue how long that would take. It's it the whole thing is it does feel like yeah, like we have built on the ashes of a previous civilization. Mm -hmm. It just that's that's what I mean. That's everything you see that and and John Levy even had some videos that obviously flowed very nicely with your with your stuff, Vitaly of that what brick starts to look like when it's been melted it eventually starts to look like a mountain it like literally comes it starts to look like stone eventually and so he was showing places i think it was outside of san francisco where it was this red mount mountain except for there was parts that looked like were was protected a little bit and you could actually see bricks and then he found glass and i really started to think about it when we went Crazy. to yeah we went to arizona and in into uh nevada and i was like man those things sure look like buildings like they used to be buildings and then when i saw his video i was like now i know that they were and it's like it almost made me sick to my stomach to think like that was really once like like a red brick building like i i guess i never pictured a like a brick building i pictured maybe like some old i don't even know what I, you know just something really kind of like more primitive looking or something mm -hmm. not actual bricks i mean that blows me away so because obviously, how long have they been using bricks like that? Mm -hmm. And then, so if that's what they were using, how long ago was the time where it literally got melted? Mm -hmm. I don't even know. I mean, like I, I, that kind of blows me away. Well, my question would be as well, if these were using red brick buildings, and I have red brick buildings in my city, I see them all over the place. And it's that deep red brick, that smooth red brick, not the, the, the really lightweight porous bricks we used to build houses with today you know what i mean these are these solid i don't know what they're made of exactly but and you'd see them all together there's nearly a gap between them there's like barely any mm -hmm. mortar you know what i mean they are built mm -hmm. solid mm -hmm. structures with beautiful ornate extra patterns and embellishments in, in like sandstone around them as well and they always have like the date written on top of them in some ornate curve between some curved like blocks that says like 1883 or something i don't believe that for a second whenever they say they were built you know <laughs> But yeah, you have to wonder. Set, set, set a one to that. Yeah, yeah, if you think that these things, mm -hmm. like you're seeing these these mountains of melted brick, red brick, in, and again, what cut was it? Tribulation that caused that? Was that a part of the judgment during that event, or is mm -hmm. this was this 
Satan, trying to destroy as much as he could. When did this happen? When they were, like I said, I when they were using that kind of. I, I think it was funny. Someone sent me a message on Instagram the other day, and he was saying, "Have you seen this video before?" And it was basically Fomenko's work, talking about the timeline and the new chronology. And he was, and he was reminding me. The guy said, "This guy's basically saying that Jesus is walking around in the twelve hundreds." I mean, that's basically what it wasn't that long ago. You know, it was like the eight. Mm-hmm. 800 years ago so a thousand years ago actually and that means we're not we're literally not that far out of when the the thousand year reign ended necessarily which may have been a destructive event i don't know but it's also it's also saying well in medieval times they were building things with bricks (laughs) as we're told during that time Mm -hmm. is is it likely that jesus was walking around wearing tunics and things like that and it wasn't robes in the desert and it was cities everywhere with like castles all over the place like a fairy tale land when jesus himself was walking and it, we, again we have to really all the propaganda we've seen about jesus's life is desert dwelling sand people wearing rags mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you know what i mean but what, yeah but we, and that's what's allowed to be shown to us through all the mainstream media right and renditions of what happened during that time and what it was like to live during his time two thousand years ago we're told what if that's just not the case what if that's just just a part of the lie is part of the Hollywood made up story of what it was really like during that time. And again, I, I'm still, I can still not get over how many renditions of Jesus there are from the medieval period as though he's living in their time, speaking to them, eating in their halls, dressed in their clothing. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, what an odd yeah. art style. What a very odd art style that is to, to depict a historical figure as though he's living among you right now, dressing, mm. dressing in your clothes. That we, we even we don't do that today re, really no we don't it's, you know, it's and, and who knows who knows like on honestly like maybe true when tribulation came there were red brick buildings everywhere it was very much looks like similar to what's still around today they weren't all destroyed in 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 some respects I, I have no idea but another scary thing is you pointed out these um oh have i got you have i lost you guys are we there? It's like it froze for a second. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we, we froze oh, for a little a bit. For a little <laughs> bit, yeah. 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 Like I said, what well, the scariest thing is, you're talking about you see these mel- these melted things that they used to be a building, is how huge they are. Like, yes, mm-hmm. yes. That's the thing that gets me. These, the ones that were destroyed, it's a mountain of a castle. <laughs> like, yes. A, we're talking Tower of Babel looking stuff, the typical images of the Tower of Babel you see, you know what I mean? Yeah. This, this huge mm-hmm. city that's like a cone shaped thing, and it's kind of, what was this place like? Like, it's, it's, it, Uh-oh. It, 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 again? it's just, yeah, he's a little frozen again. It's just, uh, what was this place actually like, is what I'm trying to say. It's just, it's a, it's a, it's a paradigm shifter, still. The scale, the scale mm-hmm. of what it was. What was the- yeah, what, so Vitaly and I were talking about this, and I know we brought this. He brought this up on our second podcast about the short season, mm-hmm. the year five thirty six. And mm-hmm. so I was, I don't know what what got me on that subject, but but five thirty six. It was some kind of video about what was the worst year ever. And so you go look up. There was a video on this, and it was about twelve minute video. And so some of the highlights in it were. So again, like maybe was five thirty six. Was this closer to the year seventy? I mean, I don't know. I guess that's the point is like, we don't really know. But in this year, it was dark for 18 months. Like literally there was no sunlight basically at all. So it was only like the faintest view. So of course, all the crops died, basically. It was really cold. And then there was the plague, the plague that killed 50 million people, 50 million. And so understand this, this is their estimates. Obviously we can, the only thing we can go on based on what they say they mm. claimed the world population was 200 million at the time. 50, a quarter of them died of the plague. Hmm. Did you now, know? That, did you did you know that's where the Grim Reaper comes from? That's yeah, that, that's I, where, I, I did hear that. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> that's where we get it from because uh, people were claiming during that time that they would see demons before they died. Like that's what would happen, and it's literally demons would be knocking on their door and they were, people were scared to answer the door because they thought it was their time. It was the thing coming to get them and that's the Grim Reapers mm. come knocking. That's where, that's where that mythos came from, this this horrible event. And people were literally like saying, like, I've seen the demon and then they would, die, they would die like a few days later or a day later. Like they would start seeing visions of monsters and it could that possibly be, you know, the, the locust from the pit or so, I don't know what we need to read. So what would this, what was that then? If was that fit into the time scale? 
what were these people seeing? Know. Were these things released to torment people for a short time and then take them? I don't know. Was it judgment of some kind against these people? And and again, people people were literally just give up burying the dead. They just were chucking them over cliffs into the into the sea. By that point, it's like, what do we do? We just they're just dropping dead everywhere. There's no, we give people gave up. Mm-hmm. People just gave up. There was nothing. There was no funerary rites anymore. All that was just out the window. It was just a case of just pile them as high as you can, burn them, just chuck them over into the sea, just get rid of these bodies. It, it, yeah, it was game over during that time. It was maybe it wasn't a demon, but the angel of death, one of the four horsemen. Well, yeah, yeah. we're seeing. I was yeah. thinking the pale horse. That sounds a lot like the pale horse coming mm-hmm. that time. It's like in Egypt uh, during Moses' time, right? When the angel was uh, whoever didn't have lamb's blood on their door, mm-hmm. the angel was killing the firstborns, and that was mm-hmm. an angel killing people, not a demon. So maybe that the Grim Reaper is the angel yeah. of death, or maybe yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, there was no details about what this thing was saying to them exactly. It's more like it was just mm-hmm. there, just just his presence was seen. And then people are like, I'm going to die. Like, this is it now. My time's up. Like, I'm literally, I've seen the thing. It's over. I've heard about this, you know. And people were terrified of opening the doors. And But it, I don't think it stopped anything. It didn't matter. It's like the time had come. That was it. It was over. And I think it was um, the unexpected cosmology kind of mapped all this out for me because he's, he's studied this a lot. And I think he was saying there was historians around during that time period who were trying to rewrite the history at the time they were writing the history of the events but they were kind of lying about it so the future events wouldn't <laughs> it was really odd like and there was people around who were saying this is clearly the end this is tribulation this is it this is this is the judgments you know mm-hmm. yeah. and these historians were around saying no 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 you're crazy gaslighting people <laughs> he'd say no you're nuts this clearly isn't the end times and they're like mm-hmm. it's been dark for 18 months <laughs> like there's no yeah. sunlight <laughs> every volcano is like everything is <laughs> everything is oh, erupted but is it, but is it the great tribulation, <laughs> yeah that's what i mean he was like no 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 this is just this is just nothing this will be over in no time you guys are just being superstitious <laughs> that's basically what these historians were saying. and it's kind of like who paid this guy to say this stuff and write all this stuff down and document the event as though nothing was happening do you know what I mean? But that, while there were other historians who were like, Did, not didn't have time to document dispens- anything. Mm-hmm. It's definitely a dispensa- dispensationalist. <laughs> Just something like that. <laughs> Climate yeah. change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was like, he's like, yeah, you're right. It's tribulation, but this is not the capitalized great tribulation. No, no, no. This is one of the sick. This, this is this. This is the little secular events. Yeah. This is just. This yeah, is just yeah. a cycle. You know. This. There'll be another little one soon, anyway. And you know. It's like, it, it is change all that. <laughs> it is kind of crazy. I mean, because if you really think about it like that. So, if, I mean, again, we're working with the estimates we have based on what they tell us. So, two hundred million, fifty million die. So, a quarter of them die of plague. Whoa. I mean, imagine a bunch of them died of famine. It means if there mm. was no, if all the, if all the crops died, it was really cold, and then. There's wars at the time as well. So mm-hmm. so how many people died? And to think that like a deer like that is disconnected from what God is doing. Like, so where's God in all this? Like the I is that again that if that happened, if we knew that that day was like 71 AD or something like that, or it was 70 AD. It would, there would be no doubt like you know there would be no doubt but again maybe that is what the devil has done where he said but it's 536 which means nothing to us in 2024 or whatever mm-hmm. you think it is it's so disconnected from the bible times it means nothing to us meanwhile like they'll say today is it's the worst it's ever been mm. you know like without even batting an eye like having being completely ignorant of all of history at least the one we've been taught and mm-hmm. saying, Oh, how much worse could it get? Jesus come quickly. And you're like, can you it's imagine been worse? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's been, been it's, way worse. It's been, yeah. Could you say like, imagine like people are freaking out because the sun's going to be dark in America for like, what, a couple minutes. <laughs> what, if was, what if it was 18 months? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think God's mad. Yeah. yeah. yeah just, well, it is like, cause it, cause it really is. I think that that's what dispensationalism to me now is that it's me. It's 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 everything is related to me in this generation. And and I was I was talking to my buddy Ricardo about this and I was and I maybe I said, I don't know where you guys are with the whole rapture idea. But I started to to like revisit that whole the concept of the rapture. And I'm not sure that it was ever biblical in the way that it's ever taught, where it was these 
these live people disappearing at any point because even you think I, I got some scriptures about this and i think this is where i think a lot of people are really trying to hang their hopes that maybe it was a hope that it was they misunderstood because i think when paul when the idea they get it from is first thessalonians 4 when the the dead rise first and then those who are alive and remain are caught up afterwards mm -hmm. for one thing he's saying he's comforting people that your dead loved ones don't worry they're going to go up before you you know that's i think that's kind of the overall point but I was I took I took some notes on this. And like I said, if there was no rapture hope, like you just say, if everybody just kind of like knew that it was the resurrection we're hoping for. So when you die, you are resurrected if you're in mm -hmm. Christ. So I went I was looking at this. And so just think about what Paul says right here. And this is this is First Corinthians 15, 35 and 44. And so this is another First Corinthians 15 is another place where people get the or the idea of a rapture is that it will be changed in the twinkling, twinkling of eye on the last trumpet. And he says, so this is starting with verse 35. But some some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. So is it, it's kind of like saying, like, you're not going to be resurrected unless it dies. And he says, and he says, and that which thou sowest, thou sowest not the body that shall be, but bare grain, and it may chance of wheat, of some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and every seed of his own body. All flesh is not the same. And so then he gets into the, basically the different types of flesh. Mm -hmm. But the whole point was, he's like, the seed has to go into the ground in order to become something else. You know, it's like the, the, mm -hmm. like a, like the tree rise, and then a seed goes down, and then it becomes something else. And, and I started to think about that, like when, when Paul's like saying, I'll tell you a mystery, we won't all sleep. And I think that biblically, the Old Testament before Jesus, like when you died, you went and slept with your fathers. I mean, that, that language is used over and over again in the Old mm -hmm. Testament. Like when the kings died, they're putting the tunes, they're sleeping with their fathers. But I think in, when you're in Christ, now he's saying you won't all sleep. So when you die now because because of because the work jesus has already done you go down you like you die and then you go right up to mm -hmm. meet the lord in the clouds and so i i don't know i guess I, to me i wonder if that's an impediment to some people believing because that's because that's what a lot of people ask and i think that's why people call us a full preterist well what about the rapture has the rapture already happened it's like i don't know that jesus ever promised anybody a rapture i think he promised yeah. them a, he promised them a resurrection well, first I'll figure out where that word comes from, right? That's why etymology is important. If you look up the word rapture and all the definitions that are given in Latin, one of the definition is to kidnap and to R word somebody from the word rapt. <laughs> so <laughs> when people are saying God is going to rapture me, you're it almost sounds blasphemous. You're saying God is going to kidnap you and then he's going to R word you. Right? Oh, really? So wow. <laughs> look up the definition in Latin and the etymology of rapture. That it means it gets the word from rap. That's where it comes from, which means the R word. So, mm. well, it's interesting. I, you know, I want to do this. I probably should. We should probably should have done this earlier. Mm -hmm. But i I had some. I had a list of things where, in truth, edit, truth, um, unedited, he had a list of, of things he was like, like questions he asked us, and I'll probably just go. I'll just go through the ones where people were asking. Actually, I had I had that thing pulled up. Let me see where my you know, I am not a I am not a normal Mac guy. I just got one, and I'm terrible at it. But the one, <laughs> like I said, I I know I just I saved a, a slideshow, and then I'm I'm trying to figure out where it is. Now. I I'm you. I was you like uh, six months ago. <laughs> I switched I switched to Mac six months ago, and it took me like mm -hmm. six months just to get to grips with how to use this thing. And I think I'm still I'm still learning something new every day. So good luck with that. Yeah, that's that's the bummer with all this. But I know that some of the questions. I, actually, I'm just going to read them. You guys are going to have to trust me that 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 I'm saying I'm not misrepresenting them. So, like, okay, so here's he, so you he had these questions. Um, let me go on to this will be easier. And so, okay, well, he said, okay, one of the things he said was first, you must understand that the millennial kingdom is a kingdom on earth that will not will not go away, and it's an everlasting kingdom. And so, like, he obviously quotes zero scriptures when he says that. And like, so, so I, so that was the first thing I saw is like, you must understand the millennial kingdom is a kingdom on earth. 
And then, so I think that's why he starts quoting from these Old Testament prophecies. And I was like, so I went in there and I, one of the first things I, I wrote is, and then one of the other things he wrote was, um, where is the kingdom on earth on earth is today? So where is the kingdom today? And I was like, okay, so, so Jesus in Luke 17, 20, 21, he says, and when the Pharisees, he was demanded of the, well, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And so like, like literally he's kind of get asked, the question, where is it? If the kingdom is at hand or the kingdom is here, where is it? And he's saying, it's, it's not here. And then so I, another verse I've got was, was John 14, one through three. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may also be also. So I really do think that there, like a lot of it is the, the misunderstanding of like this idea of like this, this earthly kingdom when Jesus is literally saying the opposite. I always thought about that. I was like, okay, so he's going to prepare a place for people that's not here. And so where did he go to prepare that place? He ascended. He sat on the throne. And it's almost like you could make you could make the case when he sat on that throne, the, the kingdom have obviously had started at that point. And that's why he's saying the kingdom is here. Like, mm -hmm. I'm here. But obviously, at that point, he had all the authority in the world. Yeah. And then obviously he was going to, you know, he was going to do the things he said in judgment. But at that point, the kingdom was there, obviously, at that point. So yeah. like you, so if, the, so if the kingdom was there when Jesus was sitting at the right hand, how could you say now that it's going to be, he's got to sit down on a throne on earth? So the millennial kingdom or, you know, New Jerusalem, it's on the earth or, or it's over the earth, but it's not on the earth, right? Mm -hmm. So during the millennial kingdom, people were making pilgrimage, right? The nations that came against Christ, some of them survived as the book of Zechariah said, and they had to make pilgrimage every year or else rain wouldn't even fall upon them and so because it's the little season we're not allowed to make pilgrimage anymore right so mm -hmm. he didn't he didn't go anywhere his kingdom is still hovering above the earth mm -hmm. at least that's what i believe in the north pole possibly right yeah i, I thought it's funny because you were talking about canals earlier and uh, i think it was um toad house who was trying to theorize that these canals were a part of that pilgrimage pro uh, pro no process they were perfect mm -hmm. paths that went all the way through countries so people could easily get, make their way there then you had things like airships as well from the past blimps were like people are obsessed with these huge airships in many shapes forms and sizes mm -hmm. and it's likely that people if, they were, if it was yeah. a city that was perhaps floating not on the earth but above the earth and they probably need a way to get there perhaps maybe this is where we get that you know, it's funny actually Talking about the parallel between aliens and the UFOs, the mothership, and then you got New Jerusalem, the the beloved city. I just thought of another parallel where it's it, it's always typical, isn't it, that they beam them up. There's like a thing comes down from <laughs> below the saucer, and the people float uh, yeah. up to into mm -hmm. the city, don't they? Is it possible that that's how people got in there at some point? They weren't actually, and all these these uh, UFO films, these alien films, are making a parody, Star Trek, of, Alex, a, making a, fun of it, like making fun of it, like it's a parody on mm -hmm. the truth, you know. Beam me up, Scotty. It's that type of thing, isn't it? You know, take, take me up to the well, city, Jesus. You know? You, you know what I've been thinking about is the um, the transfiguration of Jesus Christ. That almost looks like a hologram. Like he wasn't really there, but <laughs> he kind of appeared with uh, Elijah and Moses. You know. And yeah. that also proves that the kingdom was here even before Armageddon mm. started, because where was Elijah and Moses? Where did they come from? Mm. Right? They're not yeah. dead, right? So, yeah. yeah, it's 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 very hard to wrap your mind around that. But it's like, but it it is sort of funny to think. I was I was thinking about it just the other day, and again, like we make things complicated that really are not all that complicated. Because, like, so as Christians, where do we want to go when we die? Heaven. Right. So like, mm -hmm. so where would, where would, where would you tell, if you asked a kid when you die and you're good, where do you go? You go to heaven. Where's heaven? Oh. Some, somewhere, <laughs> somewhere up there, somewhere, right? <laughs> somewhere up there. And then they'd be like, if you're bad, where do you go? You go to hell. Where's that? It's in the ground. So like, but only in the, the, to the learned. Oh, well, actually first we're going to go up and then we're going to go down and we're going to fight all the bad people. And then we're going to go, we're going to go reign in Jerusalem. 
for a thousand years and then we're going to go up to heaven later. And it's like, where are you getting? that it's 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 supposed to be these things and i do think and i think that what like i'm not saying i do believe there's lots to learn from the old testament but it it, it does seem like that the promises are told in a certain way to the to the old testament people that really are not quite as relevant to the people now because he's like he's because all of the promises are fulfilled through jesus right mm -hmm. that, that's that's what people need to understand like that there's no, no there's no jew nor greek now because Jesus fulfilled all the promises to Abraham and to Israel, Jacob, and then to David. So they're all fulfilled through him. And if you're in Christ, then you are, you got to take place and you get to take part in all the promises, but he's already completed them all. You know, like when he died and he rose again, he sat on the throne. That's it. You know, cause that was basically like, like the, the very end was kind of like that. And then he used the, the apostles to gather his, the lost sheep. And that was another question he asked. He said, he said, ask them, when did Yahuwah, of course, he always says the ways he pronounces these names, but gather Israel and Judah together again. And you're thinking like, I was Back just then. Thinking, yeah, I was thinking yeah. like, well, do, I mean, for one, he says, I think it's in John 14, when he's saying that I didn't lose a single one. And he's talking about leaving the 99 to go get the one. And then he's sending like, and so literally he's, what does he say to the Gentile woman? I'm here for the lost sheep of Israel. So like he's like his literally his task is he's going around all of Israel and he's preaching the kingdom is at hand, right? He's mm -hmm. like literally say, that's literally what he's saying. And then and then right after that so then he sends the Holy Spirit down to the apostles on Pentecost and immediately they're getting what 3000 people on the day of Pentecost get get saved right away. Yeah. And so like why isn't that what he's talking about? Or or I even thought about it again. Like, so when he goes down into and down to Sheol, down into Hades, is it possible that he was also freeing the captives, all of Israel, who were the believers then, that all got the promises of the eternal kingdom then? Mm -hmm. I mean, th those things both make sense to me. Like, that makes way more sense than, I guess, whatever we're waiting on now for 1948 to be fulfilled and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, that, have you ever read the? Oh, oh sorry. Go ahead. No, no. You, you go ahead. Oh. You go ahead. It's okay. Uh, you ever read the Gospel of Nicodemus? I have not, but is that is that is that something somebody need to? Yes, because uh, it talks about the process of Jesus going down to defeat death and freeing all the prophets and uh, saving them from death, basically. Mm -hmm. And in the uh, Gospel of Nicodemus, or the things, the Testament of Nicodemus. Uh, he basically said Jesus comes down there and saves even Adam, that Adam was in Sheol and all these prophets and, and all the people from the Bible were down there. And when he got crucified, because how many days did he spend down there? Like three days, right? Three days. Is that yeah. what it says? Mm -hmm. During that time period, he truly did literally overcome death because at that point or before that point, the devil had power over death, right? Mm -hmm. All the souls would come down there. There was no hope. It was just darkness. But then Jesus came down there and freed all of them and even grabbed Adam's hand is what it says and took him to paradise. So I'm like, wow, that's interesting. So definitely look into it. I actually made a video on it. Somebody uh, sent me an email about it and I read the gospel of Nicodemus and I'm like, wow, that's. Well, right. I think, yeah. I think that that's like the, the idea that we don't understand, like that he's saying we need to go read the old Testament, but it's like the old Testament, obviously even say like, I think David's one of the few that he actually says, that I know that even if I go down to Sheol, you're not going to abandon me down there. Exactly. But, but they mm -hmm. all, but basically the, all the old patriarchs, they knew, you know, I think what Ta Solomon says, and I think even David says like, you don't want me to die yet because then I can't praise you. I can't, I'm, I'm doing nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm no good to anybody down there because yeah, they went, they understood they went to the ground, they slept. They don't have any memory of anything. They don't, they're nothing. Mm -hmm. And then, so Jesus conquers death in the grave and again like so death wears your sting he take not only does he resurrect himself but he takes the captives mm -hmm. and frees them and takes them to the kingdom of heaven yeah and then so it's like okay so that's why this there's this number that can't be it, there's this number of people that can't even be named because there were all the people all the saints over all of history who believed in god's promises all get to go now and they're all there and I mean, so like, promise. so it's so mm -hmm. like this, 
it really is this like the Jesus was in there telling people about the kingdom of heaven, which is hello in heaven. And then people here are trying to say, well, what about the who are the real Jews? <laughs> Who's this and who's that? And you're like, this he's talking about eternal kingdom. He's talking about heaven. And and we have we have confused these things. And and I and I that's why I said I feel like that there's I feel like I sh- I want to give more grace to to guys like Truth Unedited because I didn't get I missed this stuff too because I I guess I it sounded good to me. Jesus is coming back soon. I'm gonna get to go rain. I'm gonna have like eternal body, but I'm gonna be hanging out on earth. That's, I thought that kind of sounded weird, but but well, you know, you, like you have to empathize though, because like I said, he is like the rest of us, you know, he, he mm-hmm. likely believes most of the mainstream narrative on who the peoples of Israel are and the establishment of the nation in the 40s. He, he probably thinks this is genuinely the fulfillment of these promises coming to because that's the narrative that people have been just constantly given and signs are being made to happen, which can be mm-hmm. easily be equated to to the fulfilling of these prophecies that were clearly already fulfilled through the examples you just gave, you know, and just saying then, you know, this idea of, well, where is it now then? If, if this physical reign has happened, where's the kingdom now? Where is he? Just going back to that. Well, it's also the assumption that, well, you believe the maps we've been given then, do you? You, you, you trust yeah. that all the islands and all the places and the size of our scale is, is finite to this, 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 this ball that you believe that you've been told there's nothing new to discover. And you, we know everything you, you trust the science on that. Do you to have that foundation that, well, it could just be as simple as that in Satan's mm-hmm. little season when he took over that wherever that is wherever the beloved city currently is or the camp of saints that was just cut off from our view erased from all the maps and now with total dominance of all media which i'm sure truth edited believes that satanic evil people are controlling every aspect of our education sure one day they could simply just switch the cameras over there in that direction and just Turn it on and let everyone see. Look, something's just turned up over here somewhere. Let's say, let's just say mm-hmm. the North Pole. It's a mystery. We this, we've never seen this before. Where did this thing come from? But it's, it's it's probably still here somewhere. If you want to say it's a physical floating city or an ethereal ethereal thing in another dimension, still on Earth somewhere in heaven. Let's say whatever you wanted to describe it as. It's likely mm-hmm. that they have eyes on it. Have been watching it for the beginning of this little season ever since. They're keeping very close tabs on it. We just haven't been shown. We are just not allowed to go there. Every flight path and commercial uh, boats, whatever it is, th- their lines do not cross it. They do not go into view of it. Everything's just, you are not allowed to know that it's there. And it's that just that simple. But any mm-hmm. at any moment, the controlled media could just put the cameras on it. At any point. And they, they can spin any narrative they want as long as we've been deceived to instead wait for aliens for example whatever they, i don't know they're probably trying to figure out which script will work best <laughs> they've probably got multiple <laughs> multiple plans hollywood's probably working triple shifts to come up with the best story possible to explain this giant floating mystical glowing pyramid perhaps or perhaps cube shaped thing that's just emanating colors everywhere from every time this thing over there they need to find an explanation for it somehow mm-hmm. and until they have one um, they're not going to show us they're not going to say well they there. could say again that it's funny how we're saying that if they're still looking for a third temple they were like they that can't be jesus because we haven't the antichrist has not been revealed yet mm. and all those kind of things where like <laughs> mm-hmm. it, they won't be, they would not believe it because this makes no sense in their paradigm and mm-hmm. you know one thing that i i watched um I think was it truth was it oh the kingdom within they he did a live stream i guess that night i think after he released the video yeah so and the one thing he yeah. mentioned of course this is i'm not too familiar with tr- truth unedited work but the one thing he was saying that i said that obviously made sense to me i don't know how long he's been making videos i guess a long time because he's got such a big big channel but if every if every bit of your content is basically based on like this these are the signs of the end times like having some a group of upstart guys like us coming in there saying, "Yeah, no, <laughs> all those videos are they really yeah. don't they really don't make any sense with this with this understanding." It wouldn't mean that all that work is in vain. I guess that's maybe how he sees it. You know, like I spent so many years on this channel and on these teachings, I have to throw it all away, and that angers people, right? It's kind of yeah. like people who are, uh, you know, who do astronomy for a living or theoretical science. You're like. I'm going to have to throw all that away. No, you know, like hmm. they're just yeah. super attached to it. 
It's like a, it is. I think it has to be. I mean, again, like this is a this a pride thing. Is to say is, that yeah. I that yeah. I couldn't I could not be I could not be this wrong. And I think that that's the funny thing. I guess at the point where like you and I were saying like you were hoping like he would prove us wrong, where it'd be like, well, I would just be like, you know what? He made a good argument. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not on the the little season side anymore. I wish. And, still in eternal life and you know i don't i guess the thing is where we don't where we should see a lot of agreement is like things do look like they're going to be rocky ahead mm-hmm. <laughs> like i don't like so i'm you know we're still like putting our faith and hope in, in in christ that that this is the end and that's what we're promised at the end but so like yeah we're not like i think that's the thing is we don't see that much differently than they do i i believe but yeah i do think that it's funny because it's like when you start looking at all the signs like yeah and if you realize they could be manufactured is that all you're paying attention to because like i think that maybe that's probably the benefit and probably like forgot especially like a guy like paul who's understanding conspiracies looking at all the conspiracies mm-hmm. and and we have, I've done end times videos. Obviously I said, I started off doing end times videos, but then I started to, like, I actually needed to make content. So I was, and then people were like sending me videos and I was learning about things and I was, it was tripping me out. So I had to go look into things. And so we're looking into all these conspiracies, even the ones that like Christian, why are you guys even talking about that? The Christians shouldn't be talking about that. That's not like, how does anybody find Jesus through this? So we actually had to wrestle with what what could this Tartaria mud flood old world stuff mean? Mm-hmm. And it's like, I wonder how many <clears throat> these people have ever considered that. And I and I do think that I said, I don't I really don't care at this point. You have to know you have to have an answer for that, at least some kind of a framework of an answer. You don't have to explain. Have, if your biblical understanding can't explain things like pyramids and and lost civilization stuff and gods, lost, lost of yeah, like other gods, other religions, then you you really are flying blind, and and you're and the people who obviously are looking to you for answers, they're having these questions. They're having people challenge them in certain ways, and we have like now we have an answer. Maybe we're not exactly correct about it, but like the. That's the one thing that I really, I just couldn't, I said, I wanted, I wanted to, I think the Holy Spirit said, do not make that dig that you wanted to. Cause, cause the guy, cause I saw he posted on his, his, on his Instagram page that he took the video down and he was going to re-upload it next week. And I wanted, I wanted to say, oh, are you going to do some research before you upload it this time? <laughs> because it's like, <laughs> like, you know, nothing about what you're debunking. And that's yeah. why obviously you debunk nothing. And then you left you left your people who are obviously looking to you for answers, just twisting in the wind, which I'll say good, good. I mean, good that they're actually, now they're going to have to say that, Hey, maybe I should not rely on for one. You shouldn't rely on me, Vitaly, Paul, or anybody Mm -hmm. in particular for all this truth. But like, maybe that's a good thing that some people realize, Hey, maybe I need to look on my own. Mm -hmm. I need to go with, go to God with this and ask him to, give me answers on what this stuff means because yeah any any one of us i mean i i would say this and i i don't know about you guys i've had a video that was doing really well and then i realized i got something wrong and, and i had to take it down it sucks to do that you know like that's really that's yeah, a really tough before, yeah. that's a really tough thing to do and like saying oh i just like i can't i can't let that out there it's like and especially like on tiktok you're like it's going viral so you might get a million views if i let, let it sit up there but then i was just like but i, I said something wrong. false and i'm like i yeah. said something that was wrong and yeah i think that i think that our own pride can get in the way sometimes and i think that like obviously lord give me strength that when i get something wrong in the future that i'll be able to to look back and just and just disown it and just say yeah well, you know again I'm approach these approach these topics like you know children it's okay being children don't mind being wrong you know they ask questions they're curious and that's how we should be right approach things with humility don't shut things down because the devil has an extremely high iq and i think he's playing a game of reverse psychology because that is genius right like people are thinking jesus is going to come or not going to come it's going to be the antichrist but it's actually jesus 
And I'm like, he's playing chess, and most people are playing checkers. And I'm like, wow, he is smart if that's the case. <laughs> he's the father of all lies. Like, mm. Why are people surprised? You know, why are you marveling? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like, yeah. He's played chess in nine dimensions. Uh, That's but, what I'm saying. Because yeah. uh, this is that because I'm here. Like I'm sure you're doing it as well. I'm there, like looking at all the evidences available to us. And I'm, I'm trying to Look at and I'm every finding angle. I find like layer under layer under layer of nuance mm-hmm. with another layer of irony within another layer of nuance and deception and lies to try and get to the bottom of what's the overall plot. How is this going to all pan out? And I've realized yeah. there's there's like this guy all the deceptions are clear and with what he's created what the devil has done he, he can go anywhere he can go down any direction that will work for the moment depending on what the people it's because i'm sure he's on a clock we don't know the yeah. time we don't know what's going on here he knows he has a certain amount of time to do this and when his time comes i think he's got many plans available to him for this is where the people are at this is what i've got to go with we're going to go with plan z point two three four five whatever it is you know he's got <laughs> hundreds of them like it's like I, I'm, yeah. I'm sure that's how it's going to pan out but in, in terms of going back to truth and edited and talking about pride being the major issue i mean that that's that's the sense i got from the whole thing listening to it it's it was a knee-jerk reaction based on ignorance. He didn't actually know our talking points or arguments or what he was actually mm-hmm. debunking. He just knew he didn't like the sound of it. And also looking... Th- I didn't actually know the guy until this happened. I've never even heard of the guy, to be honest. So I, I, I watched him since high school. So I, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I went through his backlog of videos, and like I said, it's mainly end times prophecy, a lot of that kind of stuff, isn't it? It's a lot of just going through and looking at the signs of the times, and there's always a new a new sign that the rapture's go, whatever, that type of stuff. So I got a gist of what he was all about, and his mm. langu- the language he used, you know, he does the whole Yahoo type stuff mm. and i don't know I've, I've heard people throwing around the black israelite movement but i don't know i don't know anything enough about the guy to make any judgment on his yeah. theology to be honest so i don't know anything about that but i looked at seven hundred thousand subscribers and i couldn't help but think to myself so he's built an empire based on one idea it would be very difficult for him now to suddenly go back at it all and support an idea like this it's a, it's a saving face issue yeah and also maybe I mean, I don't, I don't know this, but it could be a money thing. When you get to that level, yeah, yeah, seven, yeah, yeah like he's at about seven hundred fifty thousand followers ish yeah. or something like that. I mean, look, look, I'm going to be honest. Like, I earn money on YouTube, so I know roughly what he's earning. You know, I mean, I, mm-hmm. I get, I get maybe fifty pounds a day from about ten thousand views a day, so that adds mm-hmm. up to roughly about two thousand pounds a month. And I'm only mm. a small channel with about just shy of forty five thousand. Okay, and so mm-hmm. I make I I earn just as much as I used to earn in my old job doing this now, which is still just a basic upper working class wage, but it's enough to survive off. This guy's getting three hundred and at least at least four hundred to five hundred dollars a day, at least. Okay, based on just my numbers in comparison to his figures. That's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, a, that. that's a lot of money. And that's just, that's not including super chats, donations. Maybe he has a patron. I don't know. All the extras on top of this. 700,000 people can equate to lots of extra money on top of the, the ad revenue alone. So I, I, I just know the figures. I know enough to know that, okay, money's involved here. He's not going to let somebody threaten his living. He's not based on a theology he thinks is stupid. Based on, I'm going to assume ignorance before malevolence, and pride. So big, and, and, like the the big platforms would tell you. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, I think I cut out there. But yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. You cut <laughs> sorry, off. I was, I was saying, just, yeah, that's got to be a tough thing. I said, I, I, I thank the Lord that I have not been put in a position where, like, you you become like a partner with these brands like TikTok, mm-hmm. and then they say. Well, hey, you're doing really well. And then obviously you could say like that I quit my day job and I'm sort of, you know, I'm living off this. And now somebody says, you can't say that now. Hmm. You can't say, you're going to have to take that video down. What if you, somebody's telling you, I mean, like the, those people in your ear, I mean, that's, that is, that is real faith stuff where it's like that. You take a lot of principle. I even saw, I actually, I did see that he had a video that I went onto his, his uh, website and he had a flat earth video on there. And he literally says he was not going to put this on his YouTube because he has to protect protect his channel. Mm-hmm. And I thought, like, r- really? Like, but I guess when you think about it, like, I mean, so obviously he's big as the, the biggest mega church when you think about, like, I mean, I think that that is like the, that is actually 
a humbling thing for me is many people I have listening to me. Mm-hmm. They're looking to me for answers. That you, when you have that many looking to you, yeah, and who knows like how many people, again, like you said, super chats, people who are like believing all of the things that I, I do look at my, like, you know, like the, you know, obviously you can't help but look at how many followers you have on these apps and subscribers. And I wonder every time I make a video now that I think like when I say <laughs> there's no third temple, that people are going to immediately go out, you know, say, well, I used to like what you posted when you used to expose wicked stuff in movies, but I don't like that. I I've been told the same things. <laughs> They're like, yeah. it was cool when you looked into that, but please don't look into this. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I get it. Just stick to the clowns. You know, I get that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's your thing, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's what they were like. This. When did this channel start doing this? And I was like, well, this channel is this guy. So this guy who's been researching and learning and growing, hopefully, has started to talk about different things. Like if this... Yeah, if I'm talking about Marvel comic book movies forever, it's like obviously that's there's other people who do that. Yeah. That would be monotonous and awful. Like I'm not going to do that. If they if one comes out right that I saw and I want to talk about, it, I will. But yeah, like that when you have that many people, and yeah, like to the idea that I'm not sure what his position on flat Earth was, but I but I imagine like when you see like the way that this has become like certain these topics are dividing rods. the podcast guys on on instagram and they had some some physicists on there some christian creation well i don't know if he's great i mean i guess he was a creationist but he was they were showing all the spinning ball stuff and he was talking about how this infinite creator did all these things and of course i I was just i of course i couldn't help myself i said yeah there's a creator of that fictional model that's for sure but that's that's not the one from the bible because he because what he described is completely different than that and then you had all these people in the comments saying yeah, what is this? Like, that's not like the stuff he's saying is not biblical. He's literally mm. saying that the dome is 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 a fantasy, and you're like, that is what the Bible says. And so there's certain people once you once you see it, like once you start to believe in the waters above and what the biblical cosmology is, when when you have people like that, those people obviously are like putting the bar in, and those and so the, all the other people are saying, why are you causing division? It's like, well, there's division on what God says and what he hasn't said. And some people are willing to stand up on it. And then for him to like, take a, take one position or the other on his main channel about is either the earth a spinning ball or is it flat? He knows he, he, I'm like saying, probably like Paul knows, he knows how much money that is and how much money might walk out the door because I imagine if he's got an old channel, most of the people who followed him first were probably not flat earthers. So if he came out and said the earth is flat, He's going to lose a lot of people. Yeah. But, but then at the same time, he's going to get people like doing like expose videos on him. This guy doesn't even believe what the Bible says now. Mm-hmm. And they might be right. You know what I mean? And so like the, it, it is almost like that. I don't want to say I don't want to tip my hand into that because, yeah, that is that's exactly why brick and mortar churches were celebrating Easter this past weekend when they know they're supposed to be celebrating Passover and Jesus being the Passover lamb next month. But all of the, all of the money getting stuffed into the offering plate is from people who have Easter egg hunts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love of money, root of all evil. There you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Easy as I mean, that. You know? I would like to, I would like to assume ignorance before malevolence though. It might, it might, yeah. it might be sincerely disbelieve what we're saying. And he's only I doing. Think it's, I think that's what it is for the most part. No, I don't think it's like they're coming for my money. I need to say something. I don't think that's what's going on here you know, necessarily. But th- th- there's always going to be the undercurrent when it's involved in any situation like this. So we have to be. We have to understand that. And and it, it that's where the issue can come. Where it's not a per, it's a personal attack to him now because mm. we're going against everything that he's built his seven hundred thousand ministry people ministry on on youtube you know talking about one particular way of doing things and even though we're just talking about possible theology eschatology we're just theorizing just thinking out loud he doesn't see that as bible study he sees that as a personal attack and and i I see a lot of this a lot of the reactions we've got from these other people so far do it does they've taken it personally they've not just taken it as a a bunch of people just thinking out loud they, they, they really do it's like it's like we've purposely come to their home 
and set fire to, and set fire to the mailbox or something like that. That's how angry they are. And it's like they feel like we've done something to them personally by just talking about this idea. And I think it, it says a lot about how people have become attached to religious religiosity and churchianity rather than the word itself and come and get it like a child, as uh, Vice Ellie said. I think that's how we need to do it, to be honest. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like a man who built his house on the sand and then the storm started to come. And they realized, oh, no, <laughs> I've built this place. I built this house in a terrible spot. I do. I do kind of feel like that. That's what it is. We're like that with this. It really is. It's like it's taking the foundation of everything that they're talking about. It shouldn't be everything. But I mean, like mm. that if you if you have grown a channel, it's like I mean, there's obviously a million of these like this is the this is the sign of this channels. And obviously I used to watch a lot of them. Like when you say like, yeah, when you, when you have this view that we have, it makes them very irrelevant. And it's like that, that, I mean, yeah. So like you really think about like most people could, could look at that. That's why I said it's, it is funny that I view these, these people who believe in a pre-trib rapture as brothers in Christ. I believe the ones who believe in the post-trib or mid-trib or whatever they believe, or the ones who still believe in a rapture, whatever as, as Christians. But guess what? I don't watch their st- I don't watch their stuff after I find that stuff out. Like I don't I don't I mean, I have friends who like on TikTok because I'm friends with them, I would still follow them even if they were pre-trip. But I don't take their content seriously when they start talking about end time stuff. Mm-hmm. I just I I just don't. So maybe that's how you could view it. We're like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, good, good news is I still believe you can go to heaven. <laughs> the bad news is I would never watch a second of your your content anymore because like you I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like that. I think so. A lot of people are waking up to it. It's just like, oh gosh, the cows again. I think guys, you guys are still talking about the cows. So, so mm. that's a that's a good point to like to mention that. So this is it does really feel like that. This is wagging the dog with the with the red heifers. I almost feel like this is them exposing their hand as as them bluffing this whole time. Because mm. so what we're what what's been you know of course. As we talk about, we should probably shift and talk about the the clips for a, for a minute. So this is how insane this, the clips news cycle is getting. That like there's literally rumors that they're going to sacrifice red heifers. You know, have you heard that? On yep. on the eight. Okay, so and I'm like, okay, so this is why you read your Bible to know what's in it and to and to know what's not in it. What you know is not in it is over significance of the red heifers because I think the red heifers were only used in like cleansing rituals to like, I guess if you touch a dead body, I think perhaps they were used in like leprosy into uh, uh, leprosy. So the point is like, that is not like the, the offering to the Lord is the, is the, is the red heifer. So what are they sacrificing is unless it's like in the process of the greater old covenant law, mm-hmm. like to me, it's like them, sh- they really are showing them, Oh, they got the cows. Now they're going to kill them. And then what? You know, it's like, that's what I'm saying. So, so then what are they going to do after that? Other than the only thing it, it seems to me is they're trying to be provocative hmm. because I've seen them try to tie the red heifers in now to the October 7th thing with, that's the reason Hamas supposedly attacked Israel was because of the red heifers. I was like, now you really are putting all this biblical prophecy and wrapping it up into the current events hmm. where now it seems way more significant than it is. Mm-hmm. And to me, it's like, yeah, like this is not a temple being built. This is not, this is, nobody has ever talked about the red heifers until recently. Because I guess it's a lot easier to get red cows than it is to actually put, lay, start laying a foundation for a real temple. Mm-hmm. Because that would actually be a sign that they could actually point to physically and say, look, this is going to happen. But now it's like cows and, and obviously none of us are going to see it happen. So like, mm-hmm. I mean, what does it mean? Uh, is, 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 isn't it from, uh, it's not even technically from like the Bible necessarily, isn't it more of a Jewish tradition this whole red heifer thing comes from from what I was uh, researching? Do you want to clarify it's a it, bit more for me? I think it's I think it's in Le- Leviticus 19, I, I believe. It's mm. it's literally just, it's like a ceremonial thing. I think they 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 sacrifice a red heifer mm. and then they, 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 I think they burn it. And then the ashes are used to, I think, stick in water. Is that right, Vitaly? They put in water, and then they're used. The water is like to cleanse. Yeah, it's a cleaning so, thing, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. It was yeah. something like if you touch the dead body, then they would take like a hyssop, and I think they would put mm-hmm. the put the ashes on you. And mm-hmm. I think that there's and similarly, 
if somebody has had leprosy, the priest would do this similar thing. So it's all about it's all about cleansing. And aren't they, aren't, they, aren't they trying to say this is the precursor to the third temple being built? The red heifers have to be sacrificed well, they, first. Is that what they're trying to say here? Well, they what well, they are, but I mean, but but obviously, so again, this is this is taking place when there was not a temple and they were, weren't about to build one. Mm -hmm. This is just like this is like a greater context of the whole law. Like the, here's the things you do. Obviously, at that point, there was a tabernacle, mm -hmm. you know, but it wasn't like, well, you have to get these cows before you can put up the tent. No, that's not that's not what it was ever about. It was like this is this is one thing and a long list of things. Yeah. So so without like, yeah, would they need red heifers to, in order to fulfill the Old Testament law? Yes, but they're not they're not doing that now. So like, what mm. <laughs> do they really are they really worried about that one Samar uh, ceremonial thing? I think it's this contrived thing I'm saying. It sounds to me like all this mystical talk about mystery red heifers being sacrificed before a temple. That sounds like Indiana Jones stuff to the normal layman, yeah. ma mainstream mm -hmm. person who doesn't really understand religion or Christianity. Just, let's say, mm -hmm. your, norm your normal secular guy who's raised in a secular household who just doesn't even understand any concept of anything religious. They hear all these key buzzwords about sacrifice, red, perfect sacrifices of red heifers, temples, to them, then high it up with eclipses doomsday events whatever it just gets them riled up and gets them looking for something to happen because all this mystical language is being thrown about about ritual mm -hmm. you know and it's probably more of what it's, what it's akin to because people like us like i said who kind of have this understanding of old levitical rituals that are quite normal for the time and we're mm -hmm. just stand and it, then to apply it to this mystical all-encompassing in the modern day of america event that is it all, it's just so contrived. It's so over-the-top, complicated, unnecessary, false script writing, story narrative, fictional stuff, you know, that mm. I can't... I, Su I'm, superstition. Yeah, I'm, I'm, with, I'm with you. I can't watch these channels anymore who talk about these things. I don't follow it because it's kind of... I was there for many years, especially when I was a, a young Christian and was just waking up to finding the truth in christ as an as a young conspiracy theorist just after the mayan calendar stuff and nibiru was returning and comet ison was making its uh pass around the back of the sun and all these other things were happening Get out for yeah i was saying no during this hype of the end of the world in 2012 i was there coming into being a new christian seeing the end of the world stuff and getting on the train of end times prophecy and the next sign after the next sign and i remember the fear I remember feeling the fear with each coming passing sign and event that a horrible tribulation was about to come upon us at any moment. And, and, and I know it's sad to still see, still, still see people locked in that from this perspective now where this, mm -hmm. and then people say, Oh, well, you're like mm -hmm. I said, that guy says a comment, your, your eschatology takes away the blessed hope. And I actually feel more hopeful now than I have ever felt in my entire life. Mm -hmm. And with this with this new perspective shift, I realize it's all it's all made up, and what's coming is going to be far greater. And and we're finally going to see the end of Satan. We're finally going to see the Great White Throne Judgment and a new heaven and earth. We're going to see it all come to f fulfillment. And this mm -hmm. whole and there's going to be a war. Yes, there's going to be the Gog Magog war, but it's going to be very short, and it's going to be over before you know it. And then it's it's done. We finally get to see the mysteries will be revealed. We'll finally see what's behind the curtain. It will all become clear finally. Uh, no more mystery, you know. And mm -hmm. that, and I think that's more of a hope than well, you've got to get marked first. You've got to get beheaded, you know. And you've got to make sure those FEMA coffins get filled. There's going to be you know the, a new plague is going to come upon the earth and all these type of things. <laughs> all this horrible stuff still has to happen. And it's like oh, it's going to happen in 2025. And no, no, it's it's 2035 now. No, we're going to push it to 2040. It's constantly a new step ahead. It's just the end is always coming around the corner, and you're always in fight or flight survival mode. And not anymore. It takes the power away from these from Satan knowing the truth really yeah. and it's kind of it's you know i think it's swept up in their play in their story in their narrative that they've written out for us to follow i'm now in line with god's narrative i would say i feel more in line with his plan and i can mm -hmm. yeah. it's like i finally understand where i am in context now of everything i don't feel swept up in whirlwind ideas anymore and uh, I would love for more people to feel that, but I know what the rebuttal is. It's kind of, now you have a false sense of security because Satan's fooled you into not knowing what's coming next. 
you're not prepared for what's coming anymore. He's 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 made you lax, and you know, and it's kind of I don't. You're gonna you're gonna get you're gonna allow people <laughs> to get the mark of the beast now. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm okay. definitely gonna take some kind of chip in my hand now, right? Of course. Oh well, obviously, <laughs> guys, we're the short season, so this could not possibly be the mark of the beast. Yeah, so, like like we're yeah. not obviously we're not saying any of that nonsense. But no. I was actually thinking about it, like so when Jesus said, "The one who endures to the end will be saved," like. Doesn't that take up a whole lot of meaning when you actually think I might actually have to live out? It takes a lot more endurance to realize maybe I maybe it won't be over quick. Maybe he's not coming like in the next five minutes, hmm. and I might actually have to endure this. Obviously, the, the, these tyrants who are obviously trying to say we're going to own nothing and like it, like yeah. that actually seems like it might take endurance. And I just started to think about that, even like in even in the Book of Revelation when it says the the ones who overcame were the ones who did not love their lives unto death. Hmm. Not the ones who didn't die, the ones who did die. Obviously, until the very end, they didn't love their lives at the very end. And I do think that that maybe some of this eschatology stuff, the the futurists, it really it does feel like, well, it's going to suck for you guys after after Jesus comes back because I'm I'm out of here. When, like, is that the attitude that we should be having hmm. as Christians? Like, you know what I mean? Like, well, don't worry, I'm going to be out of here soon. I'm going to be at the wedding feast real soon, hmm. and then while you're actually rooting on an antichrist you're rooting on a third temple because you want because you believe this is what allows the fulfillment of the promises mm -hmm. when it's like that is not like like you know like there's obviously there's the other side where like oh i gotta stop the antichrist like that like what they have this movies like the omen or something like that and you gotta go they gotta take the like the <laughs> cat like the one catholic had to take out the antichrist to prevent the end of the world mm -hmm. meanwhile like literally the churches in America are praying for the end of the world. It's like, is that what we should be praying? You know what I mean? Like, so which side is right in that? Where, like, I was even thinking about that when there's the Amos, woe to those who desire the day of the Lord. It's a mm. day of darkness, not, not light. Meanwhile, that's kind of what everyone's hoping for because they believe that that day came with a rapture. But that's not ever how Jesus described it, was it? He was describing, yeah. he was describing a horrible day. Hmm. I mean, you know, he was describing a very bad time and that's what people are hoping for. And I do start to think about it, like the, yeah, that maybe when you, when you see that it is almost like this, you know, selling fear, selling gloom and doom to certain people. And it's almost like a, it's a very, um, just a disassociation from the, the turmoil that's coming from the, those videos. Mm -hmm. Like, cause I do, I do know that cause I used to make them would be like, this mark of the beast is coming real quick and everyone <laughs> is getting scared. And it's like, at some point I was actually saying, well, you know, some people should be scared. I mean, I'm, I'm and I'm okay. Even saying that now that like, that there's a fear of the Lord. If you do believe these things are coming upon us, it's like, if you don't have Jesus, I don't care what, what time of the timeline it is. If you don't, you should be afraid to die. If you mm. don't know him, if you don't know him, but like, yeah, th that kind of like that seriously, I mean, like almost, not even allegory, like gallows kind of videos where like, Hey, if you don't get this chip, you're going to the gallows the next day. Mm. Like, like that is like that kind of that constant drumbeat where it's like, it is like the Christian church is numb to what kind of doomsday stuff they're, they're prepping everyone for all the time. Mm. And, and it does. And I think eventually it becomes white noise because you say it all the time. Like you've been mm. saying it for, for how long now? Yeah, I mean, some, uh, these guys forever. This, I was thinking back then. You remind me of again. I was talking to the hijacker guy, and he was saying, you know, with each passing generation, the the worst people who were in Sheol are coming back in for the chance. He sees that he was of the idea that I kind of came up with that everybody gets a chance to know Christ now in this world that Christ prepared for us during his millennial reign. And I was just thinking, you know, all this end time tribulations around the corner thinking that we're talking about this fear inducing cycle that we're, people are getting trapped in constantly i feel like that is the devil in his little season stealing what christ gave us what we inherited from his millennial reign is a beautiful place where we could live and have life and live a good life we, you can live mm -hmm. a good life in this world if you know yeah. mm -hmm. if, if you if you you know not everybody because not every area part of the world is equal absolutely this huge disparity in wealth and all that kind of stuff. i understand that and there's horrible things are happening because there's horrible people everywhere being constantly born into the world and becoming tyrants you know it gets worse with each passing generation but now i see i see like the choice is simpler in this time than it was before the pre-tribulation all we have to do is live our life 
and literally choose Satan or Jesus. That's that's our choice now. It's that simple. And yeah, don't get swept up in the you have to make sure you don't take the mark of the beast. Don't be deceived by the Antichrist while you're at it. Make sure you're going to do the rituals every week and all these type <laughs> like keeping people locked in that fear cycle takes yeah. away their ability to live a life while they have the chance and to enjoy having children enjoy the simple things enjoy eating mm-hmm. food and ha- and having family you know and and seeing the world and exploring and learning and growing people are distracted from doing all of these things because they're too locked into well the world's going to end in a week what's the point i better prepare yeah. instead i better prep you know and it's it's, it's stealing mm-hmm. people it, it's robbing people of their birthright that's exactly yeah, people, what... people people who don't have kids now they like the yeah. people have decided not to have kids because they yeah. think you, you think know, it, not worth it. You think about it. Every generation that comes, more tyrants appear to take away more of our freedoms. Where did we inherit all this initial freedom from? It's probably from the millennial reign that we inherited. A place that was perfect. And it's been getting less perfect since he left. <laughs> it's kind of more and more people have been getting in position mm. of power, ruining the environment, ruining our food, ruining our, med- our medicines and our herbal systems, ruining everything. Just slowly taking more freedoms away, taking away our rights, and to to the point where we now have to eat the bugs and have nothing and be happy. You know, that's that's where he's going more and more, and it's kind of mm-hmm. that's what they that's where they want us. And if they can get the Christians in a constant state of fear all the time, that the end's always about to turn up as well. It's it's just more of that robbing people of the right to live in a world where they can have a good life if they sh- should take it and choose. That was the gift. That's the good news, you know. Mm-hmm. But also we we have to make the choice as well. So are you going to serve Satan? and take part in the world and this corruption that's because that's entropy the world's going to get more and more corrupt until that very last war now or do you are you going to choose the narrow way me life more abundantly satan and misery life and joy and happiness make the choice now (laughs) it's basically it you know and i think i think our point our choice is simple and uh obviously that, that comes with accepting jesus christ as your lord and savior you know and understanding that god so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son this connection is not good. Oh, no, <laughs> sorry. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry about this. Am I back? Am I back? <laughs> yeah, you're back. You're back okay, now. right, okay. So it's kind of, you know, base, the basic, all we need to do is just accept that Jesus Christ is who he said he was. God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son to save us so that we have life, you know, and that's it's pretty simple gospel stuff, never changed. And that's it. That's all we have to do. Just accept that we have that time now to do that in a place where we have an in- infrastructure built for us, where we can live a good life and think about these. Look at look how great it is. We can connect to each other all around the world right now. Yeah, and mm-hmm. talk about so these things. Things are not things are not all bad. No, yeah. no. Like and, and I think in the new hindsight, maybe we have Jesus's millennial kingdom to thank for this. That we have a, a world built where we could have these such things, and it's just going to get taken mm-hmm. away from us bit by bit. The little seasons mm-hmm. can get worse and worse. And you can see it, can't you? You can see that's that's the agenda seems clearer now. And our choice yeah. our choice is easy, is what I, all I'm trying to say there. hmm Yeah, I feel like the the one thing I can kind of empathize with a lot of people who believed in the the futures view was that that I'm I'm a little older than you guys and I I felt like I bit hook, line, and sinker on like all the lies for so mm-hmm. long in my life, and I kind of got connected in this system that i don't like it that now i'm just like oh if i could just not do make some of these decisions i could be a little more free with, mm-hmm. with you know like believe in god's promises not look to what the world is offering me because yeah because it's kind of like that's really what it's like the whole thing about like that you know like in the bible it's like you're not supposed to lend money to interest and all that kind of stuff because you create you turn people into slaves and like so that's where like most of us are where they literally made us free range slaves where mm-hmm. like we are stuck in these kind of these situations. And I think a lot of people who woke up late, like me are just thinking like, gosh, you know, like I'm the captive, please set me free. Like I got to get out of this place. Cause I don't mm-hmm. want, I don't like it here anymore. But I think at this, I guess at that point, when you do realize like, that's the whole point of like that, those who love the world and the things of the world, the, the love of the father is not in them. Like, so like we, you know, to live as Christ and to die as gain. I've, Anytime, anytime, Lord, you want to take me away from this place? I'm cool with it now because I'm not really set into this place. But it does actually kind of give you like a thing like that. We're here for a reason, though. Like we're here for a purpose and to mm-hmm. like to tell people to spread the truth. I think obviously that's like all our goals are, are similar in that way that we felt like we God's given us a something to say. And 
it's not till he decides it's over for us that we're doing that as it you got to endure to the end and it's going to get ugly and it's like i said i think that again like as the devil is our adversary and he's very crafty and he's using other of our brothers and sisters to basically stick knives in our bath betraying us with a kiss <laughs> if you will <laughs> you know like that like you don't expect that but i guess I, I think the more we are doing this the more we do kind of expect it and i actually have, i think the i think the beauty of it actually i'm thinking like i feel like the guys like him have given us such a great opportunity now because for one they'll they're they're going to expect us to be a certain way based on the way he portrayed us and then when we're not like that and then when he obviously does give a empty rebuttal like now we actually seem like oh all right now we're going to even take apart your little your 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 the, the points you did try to make and actually explain them with our worldview and i think that actually i do i think that i feel like the, this is the path forward because some people were trying to ask me how do you wake people up to the little season who are kind of in your spirit and i said the one thing you don't do is shove it down their throats do not try to to yeah don't take their blessed hope away before you actually giving them opportunities like you said you give everybody's going to give you an opening at some point to share mm -hmm. a little bit here and there mm -hmm. and i think that i feel like the more we just kind of stand on our corner in the street corner and say the things we're saying people are going to come to us and then we're going to have answers that the other people don't have and i do think i do think that again like i said as, as crazy as it sounds and i never would have believed this like a year ago well explanations from the people who are more on the new age side of things they're going to have i mean I, that's why i always thought like that well how many people are how many people are going to go down the gaia path like you know that thing and like learn about the anunnaki from the heathens from the pagans yeah, versus lot of lots of people lots mm -hmm. of people and so like the same thing so you have aliens, you have like, yeah, you, you have obviously all the, just the, the spiritualism that's not Christian. And then, yeah, the idea that like that, if you believe that the elites in, in like Davos could reset the world, like what happened, whatever happened back in the day, you're giving them way more power, I think, than they really have. Cause I, I do think that if there's not a biblical explanation for what happened then, it really is kind of frightening to think that the elites could could literally just completely nuke history and, and all kinds of other things mm -hmm. without, uh, it, you know, involving literally the devil being loosed at that time, mm -hmm. like that, like our, our, our adversary. Yeah. Crazy stuff. My connect, my connection keeps going here, guys. So I, I got glimpses of what you said there. <laughs> no. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, it says it's fine on my side here as well. So maybe it's uh, it must be software. So I don't know what's going on here. Um, but you, you, there's a lot. You lot. You said there's a lot you said there, and, and I think what I did notice is, in a way, what he is doing. Like I said, he's bringing more people to us. Could this just be God working something bad for good? It's that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it seems like something like this. Because I, I don't take it personally when someone makes a video like that, talking mm -hmm. about this idea and disparaging it, because I don't identify with this concept. I was I'm, just mad he didn't. You know, I, I'm, I'm just mad he didn't tag me in the video. Well, yeah, yeah I guess so, yeah. <laughs> he, would, he wouldn't do that, though, would he? He would put never the, do put that. The, yeah, put, put the ad in there. Yeah. yeah. But people, but the thing is, there's not, there's, oh, I think I've gone again. And I was like, I was kind of thinking like Paul got mentioned a few times saying it's that Paul guy who brought this back. <laughs> He's going to mention us. We're false prophets and all that stuff. Yeah. Well, well, again, I'm, I wouldn't get angry if, if he did disparage me or attack me or anything like that, because I'm all about just talking about ideas. And I know whatever he has to say about me, he doesn't yeah. know. He doesn't know who I am or what I'm really all about. Like, he's just he's angry at the idea of pre uh, this millennial idea so it's sorry yeah, he's, he's just angry at the idea he's not angry at me personally so i would never get personal about this but i said these mm -hmm. these people do take things personally mm -hmm. when me just sat here in my home just just talking to the air about my ideas he takes that personally it is odd isn't it like i i can't i would mm -hmm. i just can't do that 
I, I just can't. I don't, I don't get it. It's uh, maybe I've I've been doing this for years, just talking about all sorts of crazy ideas. So this is just just a Tuesday for me. This is just another afternoon. You know what I mean? This is normal stuff. But clearly for yeah. him, this is wild. You know. Yeah, we're getting. I think we're getting more used to, it. and I think that obviously that's just that's just the way it goes. But I think that again, like, what is it like? What's the proverb about the first that to state his case seems right until the other one comes and examines it and responds like that. That yeah. He, that was so funny in the comments where it was like, thank you for so much for debunking this or whatever. You're like, did he? I don't even think that he even, but, but these people almost, it, it was almost like he had to explain to people what we believed first and then he had to debunk it. So like they had never even heard of it. It was like, again, like even not the first time I heard, oh, Jesus already came back. That sounds insane. Yeah. So if you've never heard that, of course, it'd be easy to debunk that. I'd be like, that's all you'd have to say. Where is he then? In the end. And so mm -hmm. like, so, so, but a lot of people probably are now that when they probably went back and read through the comments, oh, wow, I can't believe so many people believe this. Maybe that's the place where they actually have to go look into it mm -hmm. and to say that, and I think, obviously, I think that's, that gives us a great opportunity to not be the horrible <laughs> deceiver liars that he says, hey, these guys just seem to be quoting just Jesus and just saying <laughs> they believe him. Mm -hmm. They believe this means this and not that or this doesn't mean something that's far off. And yeah, that, that being said, it's just, it's, it, it is kind of comforting to be on the side of like the, the people not looking for the signs, like the, the wicked and adulterous generation that Jesus is talking about all the weird signs. Like, no, I'm telling you, these things are going to happen. And these are the only things you need to worry about is the things I'm telling you are going to happen right in this generation mm -hmm. and now you say like when you like i said you put two thousand years in the way of it yeah there's not one thing that he said you couldn't say is a sign especially a sign in the heavens because you could be like did that eclipse mean it did that eclipse mean it did that eclipse mean what he was talking about did... when you're just like gosh this is not you know i mean like i do i do think that was like a lot of jesus's frustration was like that you guys are supposed to know the scriptures and you're looking for a, a, another sign like, what mm -hmm. more do you need to know than the things I just told you just now? Yeah. I mean, even in the Bible, Jesus says, like, why do you not understand understand my speech? I'm being clear, you know, to the Pharisees. <laughs> yeah. is, I feel like I'm speaking to everybody, you know, like I said what I said. Why are you saying something opposite or backwards or completely wrong? You know, I'm like, I said this generation. What are you not? Are you not hearing me? You know, yeah. that's kind of how I see it. I almost imagine that frustration from him, you know, like. I said, if you eat the fruit, you're going to die. Clearly, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, I think that's the whole point is that I think that's why when he's like, did the, 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 why do you speak in, you know, like the apostle does, why do you speak in parables? And he's like literally saying, so the people who like the wise amongst you are going to be fools because they're not going to be able to see. They're not going to be able to hear because they don't want to know. They don't want to understand. They, they're, they're looking for something else. Like a metaphor, right? Yeah, yeah they're, well, they're, they're looking. Well, they're looking again. That's the crazy thing. It's like it's it's hard to believe that it's the same way, but they are looking for the physical rain. They they don't want to die. They want to be saved for the Romans, mm -hmm. and that's what these people want too. Like I mean, like that's literally. I mean, like so again, some people make the point, and as I said, as we talked about this earlier, the Roman architecture, you know, that's that's still here. So did Rome really ever fall? So now you have two, you have this, this people who don't want to die. They want to go to heaven, but don't want to die. And they want to be saved from the, the, the tyranny and the oppression that they're under. Mm -hmm. And so therefore they will believe whatever it takes to believe that without accepting that Jesus is actually saying, you can have all that, but you're going to have to die first. You know, you're going to have to be willing to die first. And that's like, that's literally like the ones who's trying to save his life is going to lose it and those who are willing to lose it for my sake will we'll find life. save it mm -hmm. and so like that's like the whole point where like when you finally understand you're like well he was he yeah he was not actually being in clear it was it was it was my own thoughts it was my own desires mm -hmm. that actually didn't allow me to see what he was saying very clearly very plainly and then and yeah so like the the thing is like yeah it's your the funny thing is like, I was thinking about like when he was talking to the, to the, um, the Samaritan woman at the well. And she was like asking about like, 
I need to go to the temple. And he's like, there's going to be a day when you're going to be able to worship in spirit and truth. You know, he's obviously talking about like, basically, <laughs> don't worry about going to that temple. One day that temple is not even going to be there. Mm. And there's, it's like all about the physical and like, yeah, but she, he's like, he's offering her living waters. He wasn't offering her a rapture. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you come ask me for a drink, I'll give you eternal life, basically. So like, that is the wish. Not saving from the Romans, but, you know, like saving your soul. Well, didn't he literally, through example of his existence and, and when he was around, he showed us the way. You know, he told us yeah. to pick up our cross and follow after him. And what happened? He suffered. Mm -hmm. He was tortured and brutalized for what he said. Then he died. And then he rose again in a glorified body. Is that not the path we're supposed to follow in a way? <laughs> was he not showing us through example what, you know, do as I do. You'll have to live a life and you're probably going to suffer, you know, but for my yeah, name's well, sake, you know, and you well, will, but like you that, will rise if you die. Don't worry about it. You know, it's basically what yeah, he was saying. Yeah, well, but. it's like the whole thing. It's like the whole thing where, like, the the apostles want to say what si they want to sit on his right hand, and then he's like, "You don't even know what you're asking for." He's like, "Yeah, are you willing to drink from the cup that I that I'm going to drink from?" And mm -hmm. then they're like, "Because they don't under." It's in the same kind of way. It's like, "Oh, you want to be honored that way where I'm going? You're really going to have to suffer." And you're really going to have to die a brutal mm -hmm. way in order to get honored in the next life. Where that's the mm -hmm. same way where it's like that if we're asking for the cushiest, easiest life, it's like, guess what? The first will be last and the last will be first. Like the people who are suffering now are going to get a reward later. That's mm -hmm. the whole point. So like, I think that's like literally like the martyrs obviously must have a, the most special place in heaven for what they had to endure to the end in order to get mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. meanwhile it's like but we want to be able to live in this a cushy life and then suffer no harm not die not never even die mm -hmm. and like so what kind what kind of glory would we have in heaven for that mm -hmm. yeah. i mean that that's lit i mean that's literally what they're asking it's like we want to reign right now with you here and he's like no you are going to have to drink from the cup that i'm going to drink from then you will sit you will we're, you're going to get a throne but you're going to have to kind of, you know, not not that this is a self work self based salvation, but this is like, but guess what? You are going to earn that treasure in heaven. <laughs> Believe me, you will. Mm. Yeah, everybody wants to be a saint, but they don't want to go through the suffering. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, mm -mm. no, they don't. Well, he says, he even says, no, blessed are those who take part in the first resurrection because the second death has no power over them. They, the ones mm -hmm. who did, well, they, they do get to live on earth for a long time. In incorruptible bodies as immortals basically so they got their just reward for what they did and the suffering they had the martyrs mm -hmm. you know who were beheaded for his namesake and uh they said the rest of us have to wait we have to go through it ourselves we got to do we got to go through it still <laughs> you know and uh it's it's i suppose our time will come in that respect but um it's certainly not through our works alone though I mean, that, that much is clear thank god no definitely <laughs> yeah. thank well god, you guys yeah. you guys want to um you, I guess we should probably wrap it up on that note. Um, Vitaly, you got any closing thoughts you want to leave people with? Um, I guess the key to understanding all of this in scripture is, is just literally humility, right? God says he opposes the proud, but shows grace and mercy to the humble. So if you're humble, like a child, God will show you the truth. But if you're prideful and you shut down ideas and you call things stupid, God is just going to leave you in your own ignorance, right? You could swim in your own ignorance all you want. But if you really want to know what's going on, just be humble, be open to being wrong and correct. You know, don't attach yourself to any ideas. We're not really attached to this idea. It's interesting. In fact, I'd hope to be wrong about this, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's okay. You know, being wrong is okay. Mm -hmm. Really all you need, the, the humility of a child. Like Jesus mm -hmm. said, become like these little ones or you will not enter into heaven whatsoever into the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's it. Paul, you got any uh, closing thoughts? I mean, how, I don't know if I can really top that, to be honest, and without repeating more of the same points. But uh, what I did what I did see out of this is a good, a good reaction from those who heard and felt his anger, basically. And it has, in a way, made them more open to the idea as a kind of the it's not what he was expecting to happen but it has worked that way and i, I remember watching um jay dreamers who's not a christian um but he he has his own channel and he does his own thing 
And even he was saying after watching that he got bad vibes, as he calls it. Like mm. the energy was terrible, <laughs> was terrible from that, you know. And yeah. um, but then he talked about us. He he talked about all of us. He gave props to all of us, and he says, you know, he he respects what we do. And this is it's, again not a Christian thinker, but he, mm. just because of the way we are as people, he gets a good feeling from us. He get he gets that, you know. And and it, again, it's it just comes down to what Vitaly's saying. We just approach these things humble. We don't have all the answers and we really don't know. We don't know fully and we're trying to figure things mm. out. And it's it's that as as a child thing, we we have never once shouted, you must listen to us and have our beliefs or you're in trouble. And that's basically what we what we get from other people, isn't it? You know, my way or the highway. Mm. We're just not those people. And I think I've said this on my channel for years. This is how we actually need to be. And this brings more people to considering new ideas. Just, you know, do as I do. Be open and honest. Be honest. Yeah. We're just trying to be honest here. We're not trying to put anybody down or say, if you don't believe what I believe, you're an idiot, which is no one ever, whoever got convinced from that. Is, and that's it. I suppose can really, no. that's all I can say, you know. No, you turn people off really quickly that way. I think that that's... Actually, I feel like that, again, if, if Jesus is the truth and the truth sets you free, it's like the truth is very uncomfortable at times. And again, we always talk about that. And I think that that's where, like, the, before I got to where we're at here, probably the same thing. I could bring it up, like, the ball earth versus flat earth stuff. I, don't, I didn't want to be a flat earther. I, didn't, I never wanted to be that. I wanted it to be the way I thought it was. I didn't want to be a preterist. And like I said, I hate that name, but, like, it is almost like the idea of like being willing to be broken down again, you know, like where I'm like, gosh, I, re I really have to admit that I was wrong about something big and it's uncomfortable, but there is a freedom that comes with when you finally do let it, let it go, whatever I thought before I was wrong about. And you can just say, yeah, I was wrong about that. And then you start to go there. It's like, because yeah, the first day believing that he already came back is kind of like, yeah, this yeah. is, uh, this is, this is tough to accept. But then by, by later you get to the place where we're at where we can calmly say, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like it's it's again, I think we like learning stuff and learning the truth. And it's like mm -hmm. this, this the, the understanding and the things that make sense. It is almost like that you read your Bible and now when you read it again, like sometimes you thought, well, I know that I'm going to learn new things, but I, how many more things can I learn? But then you like then you get a revelation like this and you're like. This is awesome. I mean, it hmm. almost feels like I almost like I always compare everything to movies, but I almost feel like that, like Neo. So Neo in the <laughs> Matrix, when he's like first told all the truth and he's just like, oh, he's going to pop. And he's so obviously, no, oh, no, no, get away from me. And he has to throw up. But then eventually he starts being able to download all of the knowledge of everything. And then it's like, yeah, I want more of that because now things <laughs> now I've accepted what's true mm -hmm. and now I'm willing to to learn based off that. And I feel like that it has given us a whole new outlook. And I do think that, yeah, I have nothing but love for the people who are even on the opposing view, because I'm like, I can relate. I can relate because I was there. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm not going to question your love for Jesus, your love for people. I'm not going to question your heart. I know that like you're, you're fighting the programming right now. You're the one you're doing this right now. Maybe maybe Truth on Ed is the one who's like pushing her. No, 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 you guys are wrong. And maybe eventually he'll say, maybe. "I was wrong." I was maybe. Mm -hmm. I was. So we 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 pray that everybody will like again. That if this is not a salvation issue, we know that I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make it out to be one. But I do pray everybody kind of gets to ex the acceptance of, hey, maybe at the very least that. We can we can disagree. We can agree, agree to disagree and think about things, and still be brothers and sisters in Christ, and and still focus on what our task is at hand. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's good talk. Yeah. Well, all right, I'm guys. Gonna... I appreciate you guys. Obviously, anytime you guys we get, get these guys together, I, I appreciate it. You guys have been awesome once again. Um, yeah, obviously, if you guys don't follow follow Alpha Talks or under, Understanding Conspiracy, obviously do that right now. Go give them a subscribe. And um, yeah, obviously, hit us in the comments. Obviously, let us know what you guys want us to talk about, maybe on a, ne a future one, especially like breaking down like the, the short season. There's a million different directions we could go. And obviously, I do feel like I'm 
a little bit ADD. So <laughs> if you could do, guide us a little bit, I'd appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Sweet, sweet. Thanks for having All me, right. guys. All right, guys, we're going to shut it down on that. Uh, God bless y'all. See you next time.